ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम अज्ञानतिरांध से ज्ञानांजन शलाकया चक्षुन्मील तस्म श्रीगुरव नम श्रीचैतन्य मनोभीष्ट स्थापित येन भूतले स्वयं रूप कदा मह्यम ददा स्वदाति वंदेह श्रीगुरोकमल श्रीगुरून वैष्णवांश श्रीरूपम साग्रजात सह गणरघुनाथा तम सजीव साइत सवधूत पिजन सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य श्रीराधा कृष्ण पादा सह गणलिता श्री विशाखान्ता हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधो दीनबंधो जगत्पते गोपेश गोपिका कांतराधा कांत नमोस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदवनेश्वरी वृषभानुसुते देवी प्रणमा हरे प्रि वाछाकलतरुभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम नम ओं विष्णुपदा कृष्ण प्रेष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदात स्वामीनामिने नमस्ते सारस्वती देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेषून्यवादी पाश्चातिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासादिगौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे Thank you for coming on for this fifth episode of the Ritvik System of Initiations webinar series. And in today's um, series, first of all, welcome on board. Thank you very much for coming. <coughs> And yes, so we have already questions coming in. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming in. And um, in today's episode, we will just try to conclude this whole matter. Conclude in the sense. this is just the beginning because to know uh to know what is wrong is just maybe one tenth of the whole process now we should know <clears throat> of course we already know what is right now um if you have if we have gone through all the four episodes we would know from the perspective of truth remember the way we started this whole series that um we are not concerned with <clears throat> first the opinions or the gossip or the opinions on the gossip all these layers that are you know under which the truth is actually buried and now that we have actually addressed the truth digging out all the layers of opinions <clears throat> to know what actually is the truth what ha- happened actually and what is happening now we can have the proper opinion because as living entities we are bound to have opinions right but opinion like if you remember the chaitanya charitamrita what is not um correct is to have an opinion different from krishna or an opinion different from the spiritual master but an opinion which coincides with krishna's opinion uh, that is oneness that is actual oneness advaitam advaitam means of course the impersonalists say that um you know we we merge with the supreme lord but the um, vaishnavas like for example ramanuj acharya or um, nimbarka acharya vishnu swami madhva acharya if you see the names of their philosophy it is it is vishishta advaita shuddha advaita kevala advaita 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 so there is still advaita there vishishta advaita vishishta plus advaita that means qualitative oneness quantitative difference kevala advaita means simply oneness that means again that is and so um, dvaita advaita another is dvaita advaita that means um, dualism and oneness 
and then um, what is that kevala advaita vishishta advaita shuddha advaita shuddha advaita pure oneness because the impersonalist oneness is not pure oneness it is a mistaken oneness so the pure real oneness is that we are our desires should be one with the lord like krishna says sarva dharman parityajya you uh, and mamekam sharanam braja give up everything all kinds of duties and surrender unto me so that is krishna's recommendation and if a devotee repeats that <coughs> that you know surrender i mean give up everything and just surrender unto krishna so then that is oneness because his message the devotee's message and krishna's message are one and the same and similarly the spiritual master's opinion if we see you see this is um, in the chaitanya charitamrita adilila chapter 12 verse 9 in the purport any opinion different from the opinion of the spiritual master is useless it's not that any opinion is useless so our opinions should be based on the truth absolute truth the knowledge given by krishna the knowledge given by the spiritual master so it is not our personal opinion it is what krishna wants us to know krishna wants us to act upon this is like um in the in the bhagavad gita there is um there are two parties pandavas and kauravas so to be on the kaurava side is wrong to be neutral is also wrong arjuna wanted to be neutral we have to be on krishna's side similarly even in this case in, in the case of shri prabhupada's movement our to be on the wrong side is wrong definitely to be, to disobey his instruction is wrong and to be neutral about his instruction is also wrong because the disciples duty is to execute the order of the spiritual master not that um oh they are not following the order of the spiritual master they are bad and then sit down and do nothing about it no similarly just just like shri prabhupad when he saw that you know they were guru bhogis and guru tyagis he did not simply stay and do nothing and then just criticize the guru bhogis and guru tyagis he was a guru sevi so he was not enjoying the property of the spiritual master nor did he renounce the order of the spiritual master rather he positively executed the order of the spiritual master and that's where the success is so similarly uh, we have to also understand that yes so far we have understood what is right and what is wrong we have seen what prabhupada's instructions are about initiations and about how this movement should be run in the future and we have seen uh what the iskon is all about and what it is what is their understanding on the guru tatva and how are gurus defined in iskon at the present moment so of course uh, their laws were you know induced the laws induced laughter i mean with, with the foolishness that was there <clears throat> but then it's not all a joke in fact what are what are we laughing at we are laughing at prabhupada's movement so prabhupada's movement should not be a laughing stock so this is where we have to be take it very seriously um of course the persons who become offenders and you know become against the uh, order of the spiritual master they will become a laughing stock but um it is not our business just to laugh at them we will not gain anything from that uh because we are not doing any positive service just by doing that positive service means yes now we have understood now we have to act on the now we have to form an opinion an opinion but based on the truth not simply some hearsay some you know vagueness no it, ha- it has to be based krishna says we have to judge dwau bhuta sarga lokesman he said <coughs> sorry so dwau bhuta bhuta sarga lokesman daiva asura evacha Vishnu Bhakta Smrito Daiva Asurastha Dvipariyaya So, um, there are two kinds of people in the world. One are the godly, one are the demoniac. And those who are Vishnu Bhaktas, Krishna Bhaktas, they are Daiva, godly. And those who are 
against him they are demoniac so there is judgment involved here right so <laughs> Prabhupada said this is a test tube um, we, we will see whether you are are you a devotee of Krishna no then you are a rascal <laughs> in one lecture he, he was telling like this so it's not about being non-judgmental no that if you cannot judge that means you don't know what is the truth what is it's just like a court the judge is paid so much why because he has to judge he has to study both sides Drishtantas means, this is actually from the second chapter, 16th verse of Bhagavad Gita. You see, Ubhayor Apitrishtantas. Ubhayor means both, both opinions, both sides. We have to see, study everything and then see, okay, what is actually the truth. So, those who are seers of the truth have concluded that of the non-existent, the material body, there is no endurance and of the eternal, the soul, there is no change. This they have concluded by studying the nature of both. So, it is not that they only studied one side of it. No, they studied both. So, that is what we have done in this series. We have seen what the Prabhupada's instructions were and then we have seen what their arguments are and then we see the effect of disobeying those arguments and now we have to see what we have to do what we have to um, execute. It is not just a matter of criticizing them and criticizing them. <coughs> because if we are just um, involved in such criticism and without doing any positive work, that will not do any good. In fact, by meditating on their faults, we ourselves will imbibe those faults. As we, Sangat Sanjayate Kamaha, according to our association, we develop our qualities. So if we associate or simply seeing that, okay, this guru is doing this mistake, that guru is doing that mistake, and then he fell down like this, he fell down like this. And if that is the only subject of our contemplation, then we are filling our mind with these things. Of course, it is important to know what is the fact, what is the truth. But then we have to move on to further things, to actually do what is necessary. And that is what exp- is explained uh, in the in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Kanto 4, chapter, what, 28, wait, let me see, I think so, 54 is it, I may be guessing here, let me see, (coughs) no, not this, wait a second, 428, 48, sorry, yeah. So here, the Acharya, the authorized representative of the Supreme Lord, establishes these principles, but when, but when he disappears, things once again become disordered. The perfect disciples of the Acharya try to relieve the situation by sincerely following the instructions of the spiritual master. So, this sincerely following the instructions of the spiritual master is the real deal, is is the place where the real thing happens. Uh, It is not about, you know, um, just knowing what is correct and what is wrong. So, now, Guru Sevi, just like Srila Prabhupada has carried out the order of his spiritual master. Now, we have to carry out our order and that is where the majority of the work is there. So, we are not, it's not that we are just halfway through by understanding what is right and what is wrong, but we are just maybe one tenth of the way. It's because initiation is just the beginning. After that, the whole movement has to be based on that. So, there is immense work to do because the whole world, we, Prabhupada's movement, what is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's prediction? Prithivitya Acha Jata Nagaradi Gram Sarvatra Prachar Hoi Bamaranam. Every town and village of the planet, his name has to be spread. And the Sankirtan movement, based on the pure principles of the Acharya, has to be spread. And Srila Prabhupada has set up the foundation, but the work is far from being done. He could have done, as we have already discussed yesterday, he could have done everything, but he left it for us so that we have service to do. Now is the time that we have to take up that service and um, dedicate our lives for that purpose. And that is very essential. Just a second. 
So, what, how have we taken up this process and what we need to do? So, first thing is, since we now know that we, uh, this whole um, ISKCON situation is based on a false platform and on a platform of disobedience to the Acharya and to the Parampara system and therefore to Krishna himself, now we need to, for those who are um, associated with um, ISKCON in some way, we need to slowly or as quickly as possible actually disassociate ourselves and keep ourselves in the association of right-minded uh, devotees. So that is the first thing, how to disassociate ourselves from that association and wait a second, I do not know. Hmm, that's interesting. Uh huh. Presentation. Okay, I didn't know this. There was a presentation. Uh, no, we can go without that screen. Okay. All right. Even that is all right. Or maybe that is small, isn't it? Let's go to presentation style. Mm -hmm. that's a that's a cool little feature I just learned but you know what that is extending the window but I think that's how it will work all right so chapter 3 Sastric study of deviation actually we kind of done this so we will not repeat the things that we've already done but we will see those things as you see anyone who disobeys the order of the spiritual master immediately becomes useless so that is important we have studied through all this now the psychology of deviation this is something um, we need to understand the psychology of deviation just a second I hope you can see that. Just let me know in the comments if you can easily see that text on the side. <clears throat> I just moved it a little, little bit out of the way, so that. Okay. So the psychology of deviation, how these deviations happen, why these deviations happen, is also important to understand, because we need to know how not to replicate such a psychology, and. Because they are, okay, they can read it. Okay, good. Thank you. <laughs> so, so that we don't repeat this again. Srila Prabhupada said that, let us not mistake, uh, repeat the mistake of that happened in um, Gaudiya Mat. And But the same thing happened. Why? Because there was no careful, um, what is that, consideration of those principles which actually led to the deviation. And... If you see how it happened, right after Srila Prabhupada's um, physical disappearance, there was no complete database of books. Um, the understanding of the disciples of the philosophy, I mean the understanding of philosophy by the disciples just depended on how much time they actually spent reading the books and also from whom they heard. And the devotees who would speak on the subjects, they were themselves, I mean, not, not completely well-versed with all that Srila Prabhupada wanted. Like what we have now, this Veda base and all these tools were not there in 1978. And so they could not immediately take out which verse, you know, whenever they wanted, you know, and then show it to people, it was not there. And they actually couldn't figure out the whole problem with this Guru system. They thought it was what Prabhupada wanted. And... Because only a very select few had actually access to Srila Prabhupada personally in those days. So they knew and they could manipulate and that's what happened. Tamal Krishna Goswami was the one who was the mastermind behind this entire Guru hoax system in ISKCON. So he's the one who started. In fact, that video that you saw yesterday of Jayadvaita Swami um, speaking against chanting the Prabhupada Pranati Mantra, Pranam Mantra, 
which is Namam Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtha and also Jai, Jai Prabhupada, Jai Prabhupada. He spoke against that. He, in the beginning, he was not buying into this whole um, story. When Tamal Krishna Goswami um, showed the Jalanand letter and Jayadvata Swami saw it, he, he, he said, but this letter doesn't say that, you know, there's any gurus in this. So, but then Sri Tamal Krishna Goswami, of course, override, overrode all the opinions of the other devotees. And he said, no, 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 I was there with Prabhupada, you know, this is what he meant. And that's it. That's how the whole thing started. And then they also started to believe this whole thing. And the whole <coughs> deviation happened like that. So, in this way, the select few who were there with Prabhupada, they could manipulate. And, but now, by Prabhupada's grace, by Krishna's grace, by the hard work of devotees who have put in their time and effort <coughs> to record, to transcribe everything that Srila Prabhupada had said in his conversations and uh, in his lectures and his books and those who compiled everything, the evidence. <coughs> we are deeply indebted to the service of all, uh, to all such devotees who have rendered such valuable service. And today, <coughs> because of all that, we can sit and study the whole situation from the Shastri point of view. So, that's the reason why it went astray. The whole movement went astray because that was everybody. And even I mean, the whole movement was going, growing so fast. So fast. But Prabhupada wanted the depth. He did not want to just spread far and wide. He also wanted to go deep. He wanted the devotees to go deep. At one point in time in 1976, he said it's time to boil the milk and to cook it down. What does he mean by that? He meant that we are making so many devotees, but then those devotees have to be trained properly. Like for example, those devotees, if you see the gurus and mostly um, most of the gurus and senior devotees in ISKCON, they have been with Prabhupada and they were personally trained by Prabhupada and even if they deviated and everything, I mean, they stayed on in the movement. But we see so many devotees who come and go and come and go, they, they don't stay for very long. Because Prabhupada trained those devotees, you know, with personal instructions. I mean, in the beginning of the movement when he had nobody with him. And then he spent time with every single one of them, you know, cooking with them and teaching them how to cook, teaching them every single aspect of devotional service, being with them. I mean, that close association of pure devotee definitely had its effect. And that's why um, this, the, those who were like that, they could, did not leave so easily. Uh, of course, they went on the other side, they went, you know, on Guru Bhogi and Guru Tyagi way. But then they should have been more um, grateful and then served as a disciple properly. But then, you know, these things happen. Whatever happened has happened. It's not that we forget the past. That's again not that. We should take lessons from the past. Whatever past is past, yes, it happened. We cannot change it. But it is not that we should not dwell on it. We should dwell on it and understand what was wrong. And then we should also understand why they went wrong. Not just to understand what went wrong, but why these things went wrong. Because once we get to that state, understanding why they actually went wrong, then we can see um, when to uh, or how to stop even the... Because those were ma manifestations of imperfect thinking and imperfect attitudes. And then it resulted as imperfect actions and then imperfect results and imperfect catastrophes. I mean, catastrophes are always imperfect. But... You know, th this is what it went. So we need to address the problem at its root. So we need to understand the root. We can we can see a tree only from the trunk and the leaves. And but what is keeping this whole thing intact is actually the roots. So if we know the root of the problem, then yes. So that's why it is important to understand the psychology of deviation, and that is explained in Chaitanya Charitamrita why these things happen in the first place. Nishiddhachara, Kutinati, Jiva Himsana, Labha, Puja, Pratishthadi, Jata, Upashakha, Gana. Chaitanya Charitamrita, Madhilila, Chapter 19, Text 159. So, here Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explains, 
Some unnecessary creepers going with, growing with the bhakti creeper are the creepers of behavior unacceptable for those trying to attain perfection, diplomatic behavior, animal killing, jiva himsana. The jiva himsana, animal killing is one thing and also there is, in fact, jiva himsa is, is even even more broadly defined by Srila Prabhupada in other places. We will go through that. Animal killing, mundane profiteering, mundane adoration and mundane importance. All these are unwanted creepers. So, what is this creeper and what is this? What is happening? So, this chapter of Madhilila, 19th chapter, is where Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is explaining how a devotee should cultivate his devotional service just as he would take care of a nice garden. Just as a gardener would take care of an, his nice garden. We have to be very careful when we are when we are a gardener, how carefully we have to take care of the plant, the creeper, so that it is grown properly, is growing properly. So there are so many things that need attention. It's not just like you water, you pour water and the sunlight anyway comes by its own accord and the soil is already there and it will happen, everything will happen by its own accord. No, you still, that is a forest. What will happen then is a forest. What is the difference between agriculture or gardening compared to a forest? A forest, there is no rules. Anything can grow, whatever, like the, the what is that? Survival of the fittest, that is what goes on in the forest. No matter what is right and what is wrong, whoever is more powerful, he will win. That's it, that's forest. But if you are talking about gardening or agriculture, then... First of all, there is an aim, there is an aim, like a farmer, he wants to grow, suppose, tomatoes, let's say. So for tomatoes, there is a particular atmospheric condition that is needed, that much amount of water, that much amount of um, whatever manure and sunlight and soil and whatever. And what are the insects or the pests that would probably harm that plant and what are the weeds that might grow along with the tomato plant and what might jeopardize that aim. So there is a particular aim when it comes to gardening or um, agriculture. That's why it's called agriculture. When we speak about culture, there has to be an aim. Without aim, there is no culture. It's not culture, it's forest. It's just wild. That's why it is called wild. <laughs> why we call it wild? Because everything just grows wild. I mean, there is no, there's no rules. Just whoever power is just a power struggle, and whoever is more powerful, he will just just like a lion. He would just he's called the king of the forest because he's just the most powerful. It's not that he is the most morally upright or something like that. It is just because he is most powerful, and that's pretty much the situation in Kali Yuga. Whoever has more power in in Kali Yuga, the power is money. So whoever has more money. He is the king, you know, he is the first world country or he is the elite, he, is the, he gets the first class ticket in the aeroplane. Everything is just money, the power. So that's actually not culture, that is wild, wildlife. That is a wildlife. So culture means we have to have an aim. So the aim is Krishna consciousness, the highest aim. Everybody has their aim. Some, like some people have their own aim, they have created their own aim. That is just like a wildlife aim, just like a... Like a lion has an aim of, you know, um, I need to I need to hunt that deer down. I need to hunt that zebra down. Or the pest. The pest, its aim is how to spoil, not how to spoil this plant actually. Oh, this is food for me. I need to eat that. So everybody has these aims. Everybody has an aim. Even an animal has an aim. But is it the Shreya, the, the ultimate, ultimate um, aim of living entity? That can only be understood in human form of life and in human form of life, we know from the scriptures now, from by the grace of Srila Prabhupada, that the ultimate aim of human life is to become Krishna conscious, devotee of Krishna and surrender to Him. And once we come to that, there is even more finer detail. Even after understanding it, we can still go into wildlife. If we especially 
do not take care of this whole process in its proper manner, then again we will be cultivating wildlife. Like Hathimata. Hathimata means mad elephant offense. The offense, the Vaishnava Prad, the offense to Vaishnavas is mad elephant offense. If, if you are if you are a gardener and if a mad elephant, absolutely mad elephant comes into the garden, what will happen to the garden? Completely destroyed and mayhem, it will cause a mayhem. So that's what um, is Hatimata, the wild, I mean the mad elephant offense. And not just any Vaishnava, but Srila Prabhupada, who is the Param Vaishnav, who is the greatest Vaishnava that ever lived on the planet, especially in Kali Yuga. I mean, to preach to the whole world in a time when God consciousness is um, condemned in this Kali Yuga, is a mammoth, is an in unbelievable task, unbelievable achievement. So, there is no uh, end to the glory of Srila Prabhupada. So, to offend him is the greatest disservice we can do to ourselves and to the rest of the world. The only saving grace for the whole world is Srila Prabhupada's movement. Period. I mean, there is no... We can be... We can have politically correct statements to the rest of the ideologists of this world saying that, yeah, everything is all right, you know, you add Krishna consciousness to it. But to actually speak the truth, other than Srila Prabhupada's movement, there is no hope for this world. And if the Prabhupada's movement is not conducted properly, then the whole hope for the world that is there is completely undone. It, it's completely, of course, cannot be undone. I mean, Krishna's plan will work. It's just whether we want to be part of the plan and be blessed. Just like Krishna has already said to Arjuna, <clears throat> Arjuna, I am trying to convince you here to fight, but don't think that I am doing so because I depend on you. I am convincing you as if I am dependent on you to execute, I mean to kill these Kauravas. <clears throat> but don't think that without you, I will not be able to achieve my plan. My plan will work, nevertheless. Why should I spend so much time convincing you? Nimitta matram bhavasavya Become an instrument in my plan and be blessed in that way. So that is our only reason. Why there are so many demigods to govern different aspects of the universal management? Don't you think that Krishna can manage, cannot manage, don't you think Krishna can um, can manage uh, all the universal affairs alone? Uh, he can. And not only Krishna can do it, even when Hiranyakashipu came, he managed the entire affairs of the universe without the help of the demigods, single-handedly. A pure devotee of Krishna, of course, who was cursed, even a cursed pure devotee of Krishna could manage the affairs of the entire universe alone without the help of the demigods. So why can't Krishna, I mean Krishna by his breathing he is bringing out and destroying universes. So never should we think that you know we are the um, you know the, the real deal. No, we are never the real deal. The real deal is always Krishna and his pure devotees. What appears as though that uh, there is need. That is actually Krishna's um, Krishna's um, mercy on us. That he has just like the deity, the deity of Krishna. Or so, so, let's take the whole, the same example, like the demigods. The demigods manage different affairs of the universal creation, not because Krishna needed their support, but because they wanted to serve Krishna. But then again, they also had this tendency to become like a controller. So yes, okay, they are given a controlling position. At the same time, they are given the point of, I mean, the, the, the facility for serving Krishna. So, Krishna gave them the chance to serve him, just like um, Devaki Vasudev. They prayed in their previous life to Krishna that we want you as our son. We want a son like you. And Lord Vishnu, I mean, they, they did their austerities for 12,000 years. And Krishna actually said that, all right, there is no son like me, there is no one like me, so I will myself become your son. So in that way, for three lives, you know, 
he became their son and Vasudev and Devaki is one of those lives. So, because they wanted to serve him as parents, he accepted, all right. Not that he needed them. He doesn't need anybody. He's Swarat. So, that's, that's something we have to always understand. And um, it is for our own benefit that Krishna has come. It is for our own benefit that Srila Prabhupada has come. And it is for our own benefit that we serve Srila Prabhupada um, to the furthest extent possible. And that's basic gratefulness even. Our this life we have to give for the service of Srila Prabhupada. And so, coming back to the point of this Nishiddhachara, this Upashakha. So, this garden of uh, the Bhakti Lata, the creeper of devotional service. So, this culture, we have, we need to, the aim is to keep that creeper growing and growing and flourishing. That is the whole aim of this gardener, who we all have to be. We all are gardeners of our own creepers of devotion. So, <clears throat> we need to take care that the pests don't come. We need to take care that the weeds don't overpower. We need to take care of all the conditions so that the creeper of devotional service is not hampered. The growth of that creeper is not hampered. So, this chapter of the 19th chapter of Madhya is such an instructive chapter for by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, where, wherein he uh, very nicely describes this whole creeper and how we should take care of it. And as he is, the watering of the creeper is the hearing and chanting of about Krishna. If we don't do that, we are drying it up. Actually, that's a fact. When we don't hear, when we don't read Prabhupada's books, when we don't keep association with devotees, you know, what will happen is, we are drying up, even though we may do service, other services. But because our mind is dwelling on other things, because as long as it doesn't dwell on Krishna, it will dwell on other things. And other things means Maya. There are only two things, Krishna and Maya. Krishna Surya Sama, Maya Andhakar. Jahan Krishna, Tahan Nahi, Maya Radhikar. So, Krishna is like the sun, Maya is like the darkness. The darkness is just the shadow. And it's just right, following every single thing. If we face the sun, we face light. We face the other side, we face darkness, the shadow. So, um, there are only two things. So, we have to be very careful not to think of any other thing. So, we need to constantly hear about Krishna, constantly hear about Krishna, so that, just like advertising, the more you hear about something, the more you think it is true. That's actually how things are propagated in this world. It is not about logic. Many things, if you see, if you actually study, there has been no logic in acceptance of those things. Like for example, who is our father? We, we talk about logic and stuff. But when it comes to actually accepting the way we accept, if we do study how we accept, in fact, it is also a marketing study. I mean, not marketing study. It's a study which we need to know in order to know marketing. You know, even in marketing and advertising, it is said that people buy not because of logic. They buy because of their emotional uh, interest in that. And then they justify their decision using logic. Even if it is a plane, even if it's such big, big things, it actually goes on emotions. As much as we would like it to do, like to do it on the platform of logic, we in, inherently don't do it on the platform. So why I'm telling this? Because the truth is very logical. I mean, it's, it's very, it's just there. I mean, the truth and falsity both are there. But why people accept a falsity? Because that's what they were fed. That's what they were fed with. So, if you repeat a lie a hundred times, people will believe it as true. Because that's, that's the only thing they have been hearing. So, we need to... So, when Sri Chaitanya uh, Mahaprabhu said that Prithivithi Achyajatanagradhigram Everyone, every town and village of the world will chant my name. When he said that, to come to that platform, that means it has to become a household word. Like when it was, when Prashila Prabhupada was around. The Hare Krishnas were unstoppable. I mean, everywhere they were. So much so that they became part of the 
culture of i mean the the um the zeitgeist of that time you know zeitgeist means they became a part of that scene of the 70s you know even in movies 70s 80s in movies also they were featured because it is just part of the part of life it became they became part of life for others even though they were not devotees they became like a part of that whole scene of that time of that era in the 70s they were everywhere in the news in the in the newspapers and the news channels and prabhupad came on tv as well and you know for sometimes you know <laughs> for um, not exactly wrong reasons any publicity is good publicity as they say so sometimes they were arrest- arrested and then they went into court they went into some controversies like you know the deprogramming you know controversy where some of the parents they they filed a i think a class action lawsuit i think against iskon for uh, um for brainwashing the youngsters into coming into this movement so they met through they went through all these things so they gained a lot of publicity a lot of publicity and prabhupad was so happy whenever krishna's name was spread like this and of course there are people who will take it favorably and people who will take it unfavorably but as long as they took it it made prabhupad happy <laughs> like once he said um uh prabhupad the neighbors are complaining that you know because our temple is here um the chanting that we do you know they 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 are disturbed by the the sound you know so much noise of the chanting and they complain to the authorities oh oh that means our movement is successful prabhupad said <laughs> because they heard it if they complained about it means they heard it and that's what we we want they need to hear it because that hari krishna going into their ears that is success so we need to be heard we are not exactly of course we should conduct uh, as intelligently as possible but then any publicity is good publicity for krishna consciousness so we need to um make ourselves heard and similarly we need to hear first to make ourselves heard you have to be so strong to fight the influence of maya and for that where do we get the strength shri prabhupad said by the following the morning program by being in the mode of goodness that's why this morning program is such an indispensable uh, thing and we very much stress it in our isk m especially we cannot do away with the morning program we if we just wake up after sunrise and we don't have a mangal aarti we don't have a you know uh, proper chanting and taking only krishna prasadam if we don't follow these things there's no way we can become strong so that was the case in prabhupad's time you know the, everybody was just you know following everything of course there were there were there were things happening even when prabhupad was there prabhupad was managing everything but then the faith that they had in prabhupad that moved the movement it was not that they were very sastrically scripturally very sound in their understanding no they were not prabhupad just trained them up for a few months and then sent them out and they opened temples and they opened how did they do it by unflinching faith in shri prabhupad that's what we need to get to but of course because and it is not that we should do it without knowledge we should do it that's why prabhupad so much stressed read my books read my books i'm i'm taking so much pain and trouble of course for him it is not pain and trouble it is ecstasy for him to translate books that is the service to krishna but how much inconvenience he took in the night he was translating even though his despite his um you know deteriorating health he you know he was translating he despite his travels he was translating and mind you he was 70 plus you know how much energy you will have in your body when you're 70 plus but he was more energetic than his his 20 plus devotees 20 plus year olds devotees he was thrice their age and <clears throat> in fact they couldn't keep up with the speed of printing he was translating double the speed of their printing they could not keep up the speed prabhu was so fast and you know and how he did all this why he did all this because he wanted his devotees to read and read scrutinizingly and he wanted to learn shloka and wanted us to learn shlokas wanted us to learn the whole i have we have i, I don't know if you have joined us in our shloka learning course just prior to this ritvik series in that we have presented so many of shri prabhupada's quotations and how and how he wanted us to learn everything shlokas and you know get ourselves very in depth with the philosophy 
apart from our it's not that only philosophy and then we don't do anything else we should do everything else but then we have to also dive down deep into our philosophy so he wanted us our our movement to go deep as well not just not just far and wide and then shallow we have to go deep and far and wide so otherwise we will not be able to sustain it boil the milk proper said 1976 boil the milk make now train the devotees in fact at one point he said stop the preaching train the devotees because the devotees were not becoming solid the training is not solid for the devotees therefore this is one of our attempts at iskm that we want to make it solid that's that's ex- exact reason why we did the whole strengthening foundation series the nectar of instruction which are the base of the, our movement which are the base of our movement the foundation of our movement if we don't do this if we don't follow all these things properly we can't grow we can't grow we just can't grow on sentiment yes let's do it for prabhupad you know as we won't sustain it we can't sustain it because if we don't have a proper sadhana for ourselves personally and proper cooperation proper mood between vaishnavas we will not be able to sustain it so that's why this psychology of deviation and the psychology of non deviation we need to understand and that is this nishiddhachara unnecessary creepers that grow along with the bhakti creeper so chaitanya mahaprabhu is giving us the what are the weeds what are the pests that will come and attack this everything he is giving the entire information of gardening information about the creeper of bhakti so we just need to know all these things and what can cause harm and what will not and what will help the creeper to grow so when we have all the information we can be very very careful we can strategize very carefully so a farmer is as much a strategist or a gardener is as much a strategist as a as a uh, commander in chief of an army so he need to strategize what are the enemies and how we can grow our this thing everything so that is culture that is culture that is our krishna conscious culture so to grow the bhakti creeper so now nisiddhacharam the behavior unacceptable for those trying to attain perfection that means breaking the four principles and offending vaishnavas the ten offenses that we read every day in the morning and other offenses all these are explained in the nectar of devotion so these have to be understood in depth uh, so all these things we need to so all the things that we need to avoid doing our behavior wise most of the problem is is with us it's not just anywhere else it's with us and then nishidh and if we have these faults even though we may know the truth we will still become offensive even though now we know the truth of about initiations and all that still we can become offensive still we can go astray because if we offend vaishnavas if we offend those who are trying to pre- preach and if we don't follow those things properly the rules and regulations we can't be part of this this krishna's army or prabhupad's army hmm. so nishiddhachara kutinati kutinati means diplomatic behavior you know like duplicity like um uh what what i would say is um behaving in one way but thinking in another way like you know and then um in front just be nice but in the uh, behind just try to backstab so this kind of duplicitous behavior cheating behavior is not uh, will not help us kutinati diplomatic behavior animal killing jiva himsana jiva himsana violence actually himsa means violence himsana means violence so killing animals is of course violence but also shri prabhupad gave us even wider explanations of what is jiva himsa by from the acharyas not preaching krishna consciousness is actually jiva himsa violence means to let somebody suffer and if somebody is suffering not going to help him that is also violence and we have to understand that all sufferings in this world are only due to lack of krishna consciousness so if we don't preach krishna consciousness we are committing violence because we are letting the people suffer now if we preach krishna consciousness if somebody is um not so happy with us preaching that is still all right at least we preached we tried our best to help so that's all right but if we don't even try preaching that is even worse than 
trying preaching and then upsetting someone because the let's be honest some people will be upset some people will not be happy by preaching so we just can't do anything about it right so that is all right as long as we attempted to preach even if we don't do it right in the first place you know in the beginning as prabhupada said there will be many devotees they may not be very well versed with the scriptures they may be defeated by in, arg- in argument by some materialist in the course of preaching or they may defeat him or they may upset him by his preaching because you know he was preaching about krishna and he did not like it or some way like the deep 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 program in the the i mean the youngsters were joining prabhupada's movement and their parents got upset and they filed a class action lawsuit so these things may happen but prabhupada did not decide that okay okay let's not let them not join no he did not say that he he went on uh, so and that is all right even bhakti siddhant saraswati thakur uh, many times and especially there was a one particular time and even other times also the same flavor so what happened was this one of his devotees one of his disciples went and preached uh, gave a talk or somewhere in some in some town or i don't know exactly where i, I forgot the details so he went there and preached and he gave a speech and the people were upset upset about it because he spoke the truth and they did not like it uh it was about i think caste system or something like that or, or something like you know so he was saying that this you know birth right caste system is is, uh, is not correct and all that. and the the brahmins who were caste brahmins they were not happy about it so in this way he upset people in fact bhagwan saraswati himself up, upset few people many people in fact all the caste brahmins were totally upset with him, his movement yes sir so. so they were always upset with him but he he continued so when this disciple he went and preached and he got some some people upset some of his other disciples went and complained to bhakti siddhant saraswati thakur saying uh, you know what um uh, they you, they used to call him prabhupad as well so prabhupad um you know he he spoke and you know so many people got upset you know he, he should not have spoken so so boldly and so forcefully then bhagwan saraswati thakur said no he preached boldly that's what i want my disciples to do so he is the real friend who actually preaches boldly and those who stand those who understand the message oh they will be the fortunate ones uh, but the others must still feel the weight of our movement of course it doesn't mean that we go on you know completely be jerks and you know just uh, you know do everything recklessly but at the same time we should not compromise with the truth we should not compromise the truth the presentation of the truth so that much we have to be firm um <clears throat> so we need to preach like that and if we don't we are actually doing a disservice by not letting the truth out we have i mean after having understood shri prabhupad's philosophy from his books we have to take to this in a matter of uh, in a in a manner like i have to dedicate myself for this so we have been saved and it is our solemn duty to spread this message to others that is chaitanya mahaprabhu's instruction that is shri prabhupad's instruction so distribution of his books and you know sharing of the philosophy this is all very very important and if we don't do it that is jiva himsana if we don't preach that is actually jiva himsana so animal killing and even not preaching mundane profiteering just you know doing some kind of uh, business you know just like without any any spiritual life at all of course householders still have to engage in some some kind of occupation yes understandable but just accepting that is the aim of life and not that's why in the nectar of instruction we have read atyahar collection more funds than necessary is is um, it's a unnecessary creeper it can ruin our spiritual life in fact prabhupad's prabhupad wanted that in his household life when he was in his household life he was thinking that he would earn a lot of money by his business by his pharmaceutical business and he would use that money to construct temples and you know distribute books because 
Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur's instruction to him was, if you ever get money, print books. That's, that's, that was the instruction of Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur. So, he was thinking like this, that I will get a lot of money with this business and then I will, you know, print books and, you know, I will, you know, preach and all these things. So, in that way, he was thinking. But then Krishna did not want that to happen <laughs> somehow. So, his business, he lost money and everything. He was cheated by his manager and then Krishna took it as his blessing and then just surrendered and then went on. And then Krishna gave him so much. Of course, it was not that Prabhupada was accumulating more funds than necessary. No, it is. Prabhupada wanted to do it for preaching. So, as long as we do it for preaching, it's alright. You know, but just getting entangled in this whole mundane profiteering will our, our whole um, spiritual life will go down. We cannot compromise with our standards, with our waking up for Mangalarti and all these things. These have to be non-negotiable things in our spiritual life. Non, nothing, nothing is more important than this, and that's how we should treat it. So, that is first thing. Even if you are in the house, not only just this is not for temple devotees only. Even if somebody is in, you know in the in your own houses, everybody needs to follow this in their own houses every day. It's not just once a week affair. No, every day we have to do this. Then only we will get the strength to do everything else. So, jiva himsana labha. Labha means to what is that mundane oh this is mundane profiteering yeah you know mundane profit and puja mundane adoration to get worship you know that's what these gurus they want worship they're into now they're intoxicated with all this with all that worship and all this now if you suddenly say you don't be gurus huh? now i will not have my guru dakshin i will not have my worship my vasa puja everything and all this everything is gone so that that thing is very hard. That's why when there was in 1998, there were presentations by um, Ritvik devotees, Madhu Pandit Prabhu, along with Sundagopal Prabhu, you know, Adridharan Prabhu. They were they were going and you know meeting all this uh, ISKCON intelligentsia, the whole the whole uh, management of ISKCON, and they were having conferences and they were explaining the whole matter. And they did not have serious replies to these things because it was just the truth. They tried their best, some people, some of them tried to argue, but you know, there was nothing, no substantial argument from their side. And even after all that, they they considered it as, you know, a, a deviation and they did not budge. They did not budge. It's not that they don't know. Everybody of them, they know the truth. I mean, they know, the, and the seniors especially, they know that there is this rhythmic system and everything, but they choose not to follow because it interferes with their puja. Their Vyasa Puja and all these things, they, they, they want the worship, they want the adoration of all the disciples. It's just a disease, it's a very big disease. Even when we come to devotional service, in the beginning, yes, one is humble, but as one grows in devotional service, uh, it can get to the head. Yo, now I want to become. Actually, you know, now you see, this is the thing. We have put this in the. I'm actually showing this from the IS 77. This is actually what you're seeing on the screen is the IS 77. Initiations after 1977 position paper that we have come up with. There is the PDF version of that. You see what is the Tamal Krishna's confession there? I can say, this is, he did this in 1980 when he was suspended. He was a suspended guru in 1980. He was not allowed to give initiations because he was so overpowering and he was so forceful um, that GBC, you know, they, they, dis, they suspended him for one year. And that's when he spoke this. I can definitely say for myself and for which I humbly beg forgiveness from everybody that there was definitely some degree of trying to control. This is the conditioned nature and I and it came out in the highest position of all. Guru. Oh, wonderful. Now I am a guru and there is only 11 of us. You see that? How Tamal Krishna was... Of course, he, he admitted his fault there. But then again, when the GBC unsuspended him, when this... Uh, oh, this this man is going to create trouble for us. Oh, he because once they suspended him, then he started to speak the truth, and you know the whole guru thing will fall down again. Oh, the guru system might be disbanded. So therefore, they offered him again. All right, all right. You know, we we remove the suspension, and then he went back shamelessly. He went back and started initiating again. This is what happened. So 
therefore we need to know that you know even after coming to krishna consciousness the tendency to control you see there was definitely some degree of trying to, it's not it was not just some degree it was a huge degree of trying to control and it came out in the highest position of all in fact that's how prabhupada was even poisoned because of this because of this this puja pratishtha pratishtha means mundane importance you know adoration all these things they wanted to be important they wanted to be the guru they wanted to be the big man you know even after coming to krishna consciousness so these in the beginning when they first joined they did not have these things why these things happened because they let the the weeds grow and in the they did not cut the weeds so gardener must cut the weeds as they grow but if they don't and it will slowly overpower the creeper of devotion itself and the weed will become stronger and then the weed will manifest and the creeper will go down die so this is what happened they let the weed grow similarly in our own krishna consciousness the same thing can happen therefore we need to be so very very careful at every single step of our life every single step of our day every single minute every single second we have to be very careful and introspective always watching our own self as bhaktisiddhanta saraswati thakur said don't pry on the faults of others don't look at others faults look at your own fault and see where i can improve there are so many things going wrong with me first uh instead of pointing quick instead of being quick to point others faults let us concentrate on our, on my own fault uh what can i improve what can i do better yes you know we have to see it like this that just look at instead of just you know condemning them of course when we preach to the iskon we have to speak that they are wrong they are nonsense this this whole desire to control is nonsense their whole guru system is a hoax we have to fight that yes we have to speak in that way but then when we are contemplating ourselves we should see in this way that despite they uh, engaging in such enormous ways in prabhupada service even they fell prey to all this contaminations so how much are we susceptible you know how easily can i also fall compared to the service of all the devotees who fell down and who you know went against the order of sri prabhupad i have done not even near as much service like i do not preach as widely as maybe tamal krishna goswami has preached when prabhupad was around of course they could do what they did because of prabhupad's you know special benediction and prabhupad was there when there was um, any like gbc when they went astray and they made independent decisions prabhupad disbanded the whole gbc but now there is no such disbanding because prabhu is not physically around so it the whole thing rests on our sincerity now whereas when prabhu was there even when they were not sincere when they went astray when they wanted to become guru prabhu pad was there to control the situation you know to you know do this okay you know don't do this do that this oh gbc why have gone against i disband the whole gbc now who is there to disband the gbc who is there nobody therefore he said gbc has to be very alert you stick to the principles prabhu said then maya will not touch you maya will not touch you uh, he said this we have shown that yesterday so but they need to they, they needed to be they needed to stick to the principles but they did not they did not and that's where the whole chaos so it depended especially after the uh, physical departure it solely and wholly depends on the sincerity of the disciple the purity of the movement will depend on the sincerity of the disciple whereas when guru is there yes he can personally so therefore the siksha gurus the gbc which he wanted those siksha gurus have to had to be as strict as shri prabhupad in keeping his movement intact but they went astray and that's where the entire problem started so similarly that mistake should not happen in our camp now and we need to rectify this whole thing and we need to understand this so our sadhana levels our understanding of the scriptures why i i i why i went through the whole shloka series why not to just you know not just you become scholars and then you know show off that you know i know so many verses i know so many shlokas and again the weed grows the weed grows oh i'm big man now i'm a, such a pandit everybody must respect me it can go in that way as well that's why vidya vinaya sampanne 
ब्राह्मणे गविहस्तिनी शुनिचैव स्वपाके च पंडिता समदर्शिन दट मीन्स विद्या शुड गिव राइज टू विनय विनम्रता दट मीन्स जस्ट लाइक अ ट्री विथ हैवी फ्रूट विल बेन डाउन सो सिमिलरली विद हैवी फ्रूट ऑफ नॉलेज वी हैव टू बिकम हम्बल एंड बेन डाउन नॉट लाइक See, I'm such a great pandit. I know so many shlokas, thousands of shlokas. You know, you have to all praise me now. You have to all that. So the shlokas, learning, and all those things were not meant to puff up the ego. Were meant so that we spend more time closely looking at Shri Prabhupada's books and taking in the philosophy and explaining to others, explaining to others when when it is needed and exactly how it need to be presented. so all these things it is out of service we have to take all these learning in a mood of service not in the mood to for self aggrandizement you know i i have learned this shloka i know now i have you know i am a big pandit that's not the whole point at all of learning shlokas the learning shlokas means vinaya we have to become humble especially to the order of the spiritual master yes for those who are against the order of spiritual master we must be like the lion yes we have to fight the whole system but then that is a sign of humbleness humility because then we are standing for prabhupad strongly otherwise if you are so called humble and you know like all right prabhu yes you know i don't speak that you know yes yes you know you are right you know if i just join hands with this con like that and i don't speak the truth so by saying yes to one side i am saying no to the other side automatically so when i am saying yes to them i am saying no to prabhupad so we have to always think that so i have to first say no to prabhupad so sorry yes to prabhupad <laughs> they said you know no to prabhupad so that's they are fixed on that they said no to prabhupad that's it rhythmic system no whereas we should first say yes to prabhupad we should first say yes to prabhupad and then if the other person agrees with prabhupad saying yes we will see how we can cooperate but if the person is against if he is innocent yes try to help him see prabhu um it's not that we seem simply go to fight with everybody no that's not what i'm saying what i'm saying is if the person is innocent and if he offers an argument because he was brainwashed in that way by his con we need to understand we need to take some compassion okay this person was you know let's try first the proper way explain to him prabhu um you know i know where you're coming from but maybe you did not um see the whole picture so why don't you consider this as this as well so then you share the is 77 to that person our our presentation of this whole issue we have the rithvik video and now we have this series so let them go through the material ubhayor and api drishtant drishtantas they have looked at only one side of it let them look at the other side and then they can understand so we need to give that amount of um time for them and not just time time is not a real thing the thing is we have to give them the material let them dwell upon it and then see what is the reaction if they change if they want to know more that's fine but if they come with this attitude that you know what you are an offender you know, then just neglect him neglect him so that so we have to understand that we we cannot side just like bhishma dev he knew what was right he knew the pandavas were always right he knew the kauravas were wrong but he did not speak up and he was condemned for that although he was a mahajan so that is the example we should learn so here tamal krishna is explaining himself that yes i had this degree of of wanting to control we could see that in the april 22nd 1977 when he said i have i have studied myself and all my god brothers and none of us are qualified to become guru we are all conditioned souls maybe one day it might be possible what is that maybe one day it might be possible how can you say that in front of the guru like that immediately that's why prabhupada said yes i want to i i'm waiting for that i want to say that you become acharya i'm waiting for that that means he sent a strong signal to tamal krishna goswami there because unless i say like that don't even think of it we have to understand this in between the lines hmm why when he said um oh, maybe one day it might be possible prabhu says hmm i'm waiting for that i i want to say that you next you become next acharya uh, i will i want to name uh, but the training must be complete why prabhupad said that because he already knew tamal krishna's mentality wanting to control and that's in fact to be very honest 
that's the very reason why he became the personal secretary of Srila Prabhupada because he was doing some mischief in the America he said oh all brahmacharis come out of the temple uh, let, let the grahasthas run the temple and we go to the Radha Damodar bus party and he, we will preach yes he was onto preaching but then the brahmacharis who were actually serving in the temples he said no 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 you, you leave the temples so he was not consulting the temple presidents and you know what are the services that will be hampered if the brahmacharis just leave like that without so he was creating this brahmachari versus or sannyasis versus grahasthas war kind of so Prabhupada did not want it this way there are sannyasis, there are grahasthas. It's not that the grahasthas are useless. Uh, they have their roles to play. Sannyasis have their roles to play. It's not that we are more important than you. You are more. You are not impo- as important as, as us. This is not the whole issue at all. So everyone must cooperate. So that's what he wanted. So because the Malakrishna Goswami was creating a rift, kind of, then he pulled him out of the whole thing, and then you become my personal servant and secretary. Then that's how the Malakrishna Goswami came to Vrindavan and was Prabhupada's secretary. In fact, so the tendency of controlling and the con- tendency of overbearing power. That was there in Tamal Krishna Goswami. So, he himself admitted in this 1980 confession where he said there was definitely some tenden- some what some degree of trying to control. It was not just some, it was a lot. And Prabhupada's poisoning happened because of that and then the whole guru system started because of that. So, therefore, that is very injurious to our spiritual health. Not just our spiritual health, the whole health of the movement and thus the whole health of the world the world is now so so much suffering because of this COVID-19 and all this. Because the amount of sins that are going on in this world is unimaginable. Uh, so, all that can be mitigated just by our movement. We can be actually the solution of the whole world's problems. If people don't eat meat, this problem of coronavirus wouldn't even, ha- even happen. Uh, so, th- these things are all happening because of sinful activities. So, sinful activities to reduce them, the only movement is, the only way it can reduce is Krishna consciousness. There is no other way. There is no other way. So, therefore, our movement is the most important movement in the world. As small as it may seem now, but it is the most important movement in the world. And we have we have to have firm conviction about that and we have to act towards that. So, puja, pratishtha, labha. Uh, all these things, upashakha, these are all weeds, unwanted creepers. So, these we have to be careful so that we can avoid in our own movement. And let's look at this also. This is also very important. 329.8. Maybe I will go to the... I think you can also read from here. So, you see, Abhisandha, this is from Srimad Bhagavatam 3.29.8 and 3.29.9. These two verses from the third canto. Abhisandhaya yohim sam dambham matsaryame vava samram bhi bhinna dhrigbhavam mai kuryat satamasaha. Devotional service executed by a person who is envious, proud, violent, and angry, and who is a separatist is considered to be in the mode of ignorance, mode of darkness or, or ignorance. So, devotional service and a separatist. Devotional service by a person who is envious, especially envious of the spiritual master and also envious of other devotees. So when this is there, and one one who is very proud, you know, I want I want to be the big guru. This is all pride, violent and angry. Like yesterday we have seen those examples where Sundagopal Prabhu, Tamal Krishna Goswami told him, huh? you, your heart is so small that you have only place for Srila Prabhupada. So, these kind of things, these kind of statements are f- coming out of extreme pride, extreme anger. Hmm. So, these are all signs of devotional service in the mode of ignorance. Vishayan Abhisandhaya Yasha Vishayan Abhisandhaya Yasha Aishwarya Mevava Archada Varcha Yed Yomam Prithak Bhavasa Rajasaha the worship of deities in the temple by a separatist with a motive for material enjoyment. You see, they wanted this, you know, this this adoration. This is all material enjoyment. This is subtle material enjoyment. Um, they want, they like that, you know, praise. They like that importance, you know, that, you know. Yes, like Prabhupada also was given the importance. It's not that devotees should not be given importance. Uh, we will get to that. But personally, uh, we should think that you know, th- these things we have to run away from. Hmm? 
archadavarchayediomam prithak bhavasarajasa so with a motive for material enjoyment fame and opulence is devotion in the mode of passion so just to become famous we do some devotions that is not good but a point of note here because i have seen this happen sometimes especially it happened with sundar gopal prabhu so when he was doing some nice preaching um in different countries um and um, you know um wherever he is going preaching so when devotees offer some praise other devotees are envious of that and they say oh how he can you know accept the praise of the devotees uh that means oh you see he is doing devotional service in the mode of passion that means they themselves are envious first of all it is our solemn duty to praise or to 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 glorify those devotees who are actually sincerely glorifying shri prabhupada that as vaishnav we should always glorify other vaishnavas that should always be there we should not be envious think, thinking that oh how he can accept the praise you know of course personally he doesn't like to accept right but it is our duty to praise right we should glorify it's not that we don't glorify those who are actually doing nice service to shri prabhupada no that is rubbish behavior even uh, you know in the in the spiritual world let's go to that 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 verse this is the spiritual world see this 3 15 18 and 19 this is spiritual world i have shown this verse many times in our series but i'll show it again paravatanya bhritasara sa chakravaka datyo aham sa shukati tiribarhinam yah kolahalo viramate chiramatra muchair bhanga dhipe hari katha mi vagayamane this is in the vaikuntha when the king of bees hums in a high pitch singing the glories of the lord there is a temporary lull in the noise of the pigeon the cuckoo the crane the chakravaka the swan the parrot the partridge and the peacock such transcendental birds stop their own singing simply to hear the glories of the lord these birds they sing especially the cuckoo the, you know peacock i mean they they sing their sound is so beautiful and the nightingale and all these things they they sing so well hmm but all these transcendental birds in the spiritual kingdom when they see the the bumblebee come here because the bumblebee's sound is zzz, like that and come, come when the birds are chirping so loudly nobody can hear the bumblebee but what they did they they slowed down their voices i mean they brought down the volume completely there was a temporary lull in the noise of the pigeon and all these birds why they wanted to hear from the the bumblebee the glories of the lord because they thought the bumblebee is always at the you know the krishna is wearing this garland of vaijanti mala the beautiful flower garland which is so fragrant flowers are there and because of that intoxicating flavor and because they are on the lord the, even just remember just try to know that in the spiritual world even the bumblebee or even the grass is a devotee of the lord a complete pure devotee of the lord all right even the birds and everybody it's not like here everybody is in the mode of ignorance so there everybody is a pure devotee even the bumblebee even the birds even the grass even the flowers everybody all right so they knew that this bumblebee is actually so close to krishna she is always uh, this bumblebee is always near the f- lotus feet of krishna she is so i mean he he is so near to the to krishna and he must have some special information about krishna's lotus feet and he is you know such a great devotee that he can be so close to krishna always because all the bumble if you see the description of uh, in different places in bhagavatam where krishna's uh, krishna was described so when he had it is many, many times mentioned that he had this you know flower garland and you know you know flower you know and because of that so many bees were you know bumble bees were around him so because you know they could see the flavor and then you know they and because they were so near to krishna so these birds considered the bumble bee even more fortunate than themselves and they wanted to hear the glories that the bumble bee had to say because even the zzz, that sound here in this material world doesn't make any sense but in the spiritual world all those things are actually praises of the lord the bumblebee praises the lord the cuckoo and the chakravaka the parrot the pigeon the crane the chakravaka i mean the uh, partridge the peacock everybody glorifies the lord in with those with their sounds mm. they are actually meaning just like it is said that the garuda bird when he flaps his wings in in here when you flap the wings this kind of sound effect comes 
but the sound that comes from the you know flapping of garuda's wings is the samaveda the hymns of the samaveda come out similarly it is said that when hanuman he is chanting ram 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 not just from his mouth but every single pore of his body ram 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 is emanating and that is how pure devotees are they fully saturated and overflowing with love of god here <coughs> so therefore <coughs> the birds they wanted to glorify the bee not that they did not say oh this bee is coming and you know making you know glorifying the lord no 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 i can glorify the lord better uh, then they chirp even louder and even louder so that the bee doesn't even be heard no you see the vaikuntha consciousness the birds lowered down their voices so that the bee's voice will be you know amplified so that everybody can hear the about the glories of krishna's lotus feet from the bee this is vaikuntha consciousness so we should why i'm showing this because we should uh, always glorify those who are doing better service to prabhu prabhu pad we should not be envious when somebody offers praise to a vaishnava because that is the proper way to glorify vaishnava next verse because we have seen this among so called ritviks we have had bad experiences with so called ritviks because they don't like when somebody preaches and they themselves don't preach and they say prabhupad prabhupad they don't they do nothing for the movement and they are known as so called senior devotees and they don't like when there is preaching and they, when somebody offers praise to such a preacher oh how he can uh, how can he be praised you know as if you know he is a guru or some nobody said he is guru none of us think that sundagopal prabhu is a diksha guru yes he is our shiksha guru yes i have we have learned so much from him yes but he is a sincere servant of prabhupad so there has been there have been uh, multiple on multiple occasions in this way so this is just absolute envy i am sure absolutely sure that pe- those kind of people have absolutely zero sadhana and we have seen them not just absolutely sure out of my own speculation we have went there and saw seen th- these people zero sadhana chanting not even properly not even 16 rounds no mangal aarti they have forgotten the mangal aarti songs they have forgotten how to wear the dhoti they have forgotten that krishna prasadam is the only food that we need to take and not from outside restaurants they eat openly outside restaurants and they say even i like the food of that restaurant i mean these are personal experiences i have seen these people so called senior devotees some of them even take coffee now all these things are going on and they dare to comment on the devotees who are act- and they say prabhupada anugas why the reason for them saying prabhupada anugas is not because of anything else they can't take any authority so by saying prabhupad they say only only prabhupad is my authority and nobody can tell, uh, tell me to do anything so they want to be like that absolute lack of humility so that's that's not that's not the mood we should be in at all and if you see the next verse also similar <coughs> beautiful verse mandara kunda kurabot pala champa karna punna ganaga bakulambu japari jata gandher chite tulasika bharne na tasya yasmim tapah sumanaso bahumanayanti all the flowering plants like the mandara kunda kurabaka utpala champaka arna punnaga nagakeshara bakula lily and the parijat are full of transcendental fragrance they are still conscious of the austerities performed by tulasi for tulasi is given special preference by the lord who garlands himself with tulasi leaves and also tulasi leaves are at his feet so all these beautiful flower flowering plants of you know mandara kunda kurabot pala champa karna punna ganaga bakulambu japari jata so all these flowering plants beautiful fragrance i mean completely intoxicating fragrance they have but they themselves always are aware of the tulasi's glories that's why tulasi is called pushpasara another name of tulasi is pushpasara that means the 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 essence of all flowers is the tulasi that tulasi flower so that is you know the tulasi leaves even so pushpasara so they all know how um to glorify 
a devotee who is doing greater service. We should always glorify devotees doing greater service. Devotee means nirmatsaranam. Matsarata means enviousness. And nirmatsara means non-envious. They are never envious. They are always, if somebody is doing greater service to Prabhupada, oh, we should always, you know, pray that, wow, how blessed you are. And, you know, hopefully I can also receive one-tenth of your mercy and I can do some service as good as you. Or one tenth as good as you. So that's how we should always feel. So even after coming to Prabhupada, all these all these things may still be within us. We are only looking at okay, all these faults have happened with the gurus, and you know that's why they went into these things. But we ourselves, where are we? So we should always think in this way that even despite they doing so much service to Prabhupada, if they can be bewildered, so Maya can bewilder me in one instance. What have I done so far? So, in this way, we should always remain humble and always seek the mercy of the Vaishnavas, Srila Prabhupada, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Krishna. In this way, we have to be humbly carrying this movement forward. Uh, that, that way, we will, you know, not be uh, carried away with all these things, you know, with all these distractions. So, who does this, you know? Bhinnadrik, the, another big uh, word here is in the two words you see Bhinnadrik Bhavam here also Bhinnadrik Bhavam and either Prithak Bhava so this Prithak or Bhinna means separate separatist means a separatist means who has a different agenda than Krishna or his pure devotee Shri Prabhupada who has a different agenda than them who, ha- who wants out of his own devotional service this Labha, Puja, Pratishtha, Adi, Upashakha. So, these things we have to be careful of. And such a devotee who can't, who doesn't know how to behave, he is called a third class devotee. Archayameva haraye pujamya shraddhaye hate natad bhakte shu chanyeshu sabhaktaha prakrita smritaha. A devotee who faithfully engages in the worship of the deity in the temple but does not behave properly toward other devotees or people in general is called a prakrita bhakta a materialistic devotee and is considered to be in the lowest position this is 11247 but the same verse is translated in a slightly different way by shri prabhupada in another place in the chaitanya charitamrita we will go there in the madhya leela the same verse exact same verse you see when you when prabhupada is giving a class on a particular verse we should understand this point from Prabhupada. When he gives a class on say 7th chapter 1st verse for example. Each of his classes, different classes will be from a different angle. So, each of verses, each of the verses he will explain in many different ways. You know, Nana Artha, that is also explained in the Bhagavatam, uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita that in, uh, you know, uh, Bhagavatam every single word is full of so many meanings. Nana Artha. You see this. Same, exact same verse, quoting from 11 to 47. You see 11 to 47. Huh? But you see how Prabhupada translated. A Prakrita Bhakta, third class devotee, or materialistic devotee, does not purposefully study the Shastra. He does not put effort in understanding the Shastra. And try to understand the actual standard of pure devotional service. So we see this among the devotees. Sometimes, they engage in so many services for years, but their reading is very, very less. Prabhupada said, every day, one hour, two hours you spend reading. So, how near or how far are we from that? That much we are watering the creeper of devotion. So, we have to get into that, immersing ourselves in Prabhupada's books and understanding, you know, Prabhupada's books in depth and scrutinizing this way Prabhupada said read my books scrutinizingly everything where everything is and why Prabhupada said this and that this and that everything has to be very very that's why we had the shloka learning course just prior to this Ritvi course because we want everybody to delve into Prabhupada's books with great interest with great enthusiasm and with in an orderly um, interesting manner so that you know it, it should it is actually nectarian you know but Devotees sometimes, in the beginning they read, 
in the beginning when they when they come to the movement they do read and after some time they think all right okay i kind of get the meaning of the whole movement and the krishna consciousness in general and they stagnate maybe they think that i have read all books books of prabhupada mm-hmm. and i have read them so i kind of there is nothing more new so this is actually a dangerous mentality because each time we read prabhupada's books we will always i mean without a doubt without an exception we will always find newer and newer things in the same things that we have read before so navanavara sadhamani udyatam rantum asit yadavadibhata nari what is it yadavadam yadavadhi mama chetah krishna padaravinde navanavara sadhamani udyatam rantum asit so that is krishna consciousness every single second there is a newer and newer tastes and i think that is also in that verse in canto 4 which is chapter 34 text 30 i think i think okay let's go to this verse first so a prakrita bhakta or materialistic devotee does not purposefully study the shastra and try to understand the actual standard of pure devotional service consequently he does not show proper respect to advanced devotees he may however follow the regulative principles learned from his spiritual master or from his family who worships the deity he is to be considered on the material platform although he is trying to advance in devotional service such a person is a bhakta praya you know what's praya praya means almost bhakta praya means almost a devotee but not really a devotee neophyte devotee hmm. uh, nashta prayeshu abhadreshu nityam bhagavata sevaya nashta prayeshu that means the the dirty things in the heart are almost destroyed almost completely destroyed so this praya means almost hmm so he is almost a bhakta but not yet a bhakta yet so that's a unsteady position there that's a neophyte devotee or bhakta abhas for he is a little enlightened by vaishnava philosophy but not enough to save him from further falling down you know so therefore let us um, spend time reading prabhupada's books and in the association of devotees who are reading prabhupada's books in fact we are so fortunate to be in the association of sundar gopal prabhu why i say that he always reads you know how much time he spends reading i don't know how many i, I think even he has lost count of how many times he has read prabhupada's books the thing is whenever he finds something you know again and again um, he reads again and again of course and whenever he finds something he will share with all of us the verse that that actually you know people sometimes um, praise us oh you know so many shlokas you know very nice you know this actually i i am not qualified for any such praise because what we have learned was because of the association of a devotee who is so immersed in prabhupada's books and if you see the way he gives his classes he is just basing on the verses that's why that's why you this screen that you see here this is his way of presenting class we just copied Uh, because when you when we speak of course we should quote the the scriptures and everything but there is a particular effect when the, when people see actually the verse they know for sure that you are not you know speculating or it's just there they can see for themselves so it creates a lot of he started this because he wants them to be attracted to prabhupada's books you see you see what knowledge is there just see see you know this is prabhupada's books this is this is from prabhupada's book this is from prabhupada's book this is from prabhupada's books so in this way as we see more and more wow prabhupada's books are really full of you know i need to read prabhupada's books so that's the whole point so to get to the prabhupada's reading prabhupada's books and once we read and see all the different nuances of devotional service we should not consider ourselves a, a devotee enough as as long as we just chant 16 rounds and follow the four principles and that's it prabhu i promised when initiation that i will chant 16 down and follow the four principles prabhu i am doing that that's not enough we have to rise up early for mangalarti we have to have the morning program we have to um only that is asking in which class does a prakrita bhakta belong he third class third class devotee so uh, we should wake up in the morning we should wake up um, and chant our rounds in the morning and then we have to eat only krishna prasadam associate with devotees who are actually preaching krishna consciousness far and wide greating taking great risks in that preaching we may also be preaching 
But those who are taking risk in preaching, oh, they are even more advanced. So take association from those devotees who are doing like that and get inspired. In fact, Bhaktivana Thakur also said, how to increase our enthusiasm in Krishna consciousness when we are not so enthusiastic? Go and associate with devotees who are following and when one sees a devotee nicely, um, you know, serving the spiritual master and Krishna so nicely, then one is inspired by just seeing such a devotee. This is Bhaktivana Thakur's advice. So, that's what we need to do. In fact, Ramanujacharya, he had quoted from, even Bhaktivinoda Thakur, quoted from Ramanujacharya. And Ramanujacharya said the same thing. If ever <coughs> you think that um, you are demoralized for some reason or you think your endeavors and devotional service are not fructifying or you have some kind of misgivings or whatever it is, dis- something disturbing your mind and heart, just go and sit with the devotees. Sit among the Vaishnavas everything will be solved. Ramanujacharya. So, Bhaktivinoda Thakur quoted that and said the same thing. That if we have any problems in our devotional service, we need to actually, that's how our enthusiasm of, for devotional service, the fire of devotional service will, re, we will rekindle and then we will be completely in the fire. So, that's when we associate with devotees who are in the fire. So, just like that iron rod. If it is in the fire, then it will become red hot, just like fire. Wherever it touches, it will burn. But you keep on touching and keep on touching, it will become cold again. Again, it has to be put back in the fire. So, when we are preaching, what we are doing is, we are touching everywhere and, you know, trying to fire up the, you know, the fire of Krishna consciousness. But then, if we just are engaged in preaching and preaching and preaching without our sadhana, without associating with devotees, without, again, getting ourselves hot, that iron rod, again, keeping that hot. So, if we don't associate with the fire again, that iron rod will become cold. And then it won't have any effect anymore. It will just, it will not create any more fire wherever it touches. So we need to be in the fire and then we go out, preach and again come back and have that fire of association of Krishna devotees and then go out and preach. And you know, that way, this whole thing will increase and that's exactly what Prabhupada set up this movement for. I know this is kind of becoming a rant, but (laughs) this is where we come from. This is where ISKM comes from. Um, that we want to create, we just don't want to be criticizers of whatever happened with the Guru system. Fine, let us know that they're wrong and let us know why they're wrong and let us not repeat that and let us work on making it right. And this is Prabhupada's mercy that we have such a huge service in front of us. For the rest of our lives we can spend and it's not enough. The whole world is there. As Prabhupada said one day, in 18 days, the world, when Pandavas, the war of Mahabharat, the Kurukshetra war, happened for 18 days. And 18 days before, before the day of the war, Pandavas had nothing from zero to hero in 18 days, to the world conquerors in 18 days. And Prabhupada said, Krishna can give us this entire world in 18 days. But are we ready to handle that glory? Are we ready? When the time comes, are we ready to handle that? Why Srila Prabhupada gave, uh, why Krishna gave Srila Prabhupada the entire world in 12 years? He was ready. He was ready for it. And even after Krishna gave him the whole world, 108 temples and thousands of devotees and you know f- you know fame spread far and wide across the globe six continents Prabhupada was in Prabhupada's devotion and his mood never changed a single bit from what he was when he was a humble sannyasi in the Radha Damodar temple in Vrindavan before he left for America and that's why Krishna benedicted him with everything why Krishna gave Prahlad Maharaj everything in fact, Prahlad Maharaj said, I want to be just your devotee. No. Narasimha Dev forced him. I want to give you a benediction. I will give you a benediction. <laughs> First, he asked Prahlad, what benediction you want? I have been very satisfied with your service. And we have, let, we have read about that in the Narasimha Leela series. Um, so, now, Prahlad said, no, I am not a businessman. I don't want anything from you, Narasimha Dev. I just want to be your servant. You are my eternal master. I am your eternal servant. There is no need of anything other more than this this mood, that's it. This is the only thing I want. No, you must have it. I want to give you, I will give you. 
Narasimha Dev just forced the opulence on Prahlad and he says you be, be a king until the next Manvantara. Until the Manvantara you be the king and then you you know guide everybody in this Krishna consciousness. And similarly for Dhruv Maharaj. Dhruv Maharaj, he went for a materialistic reason to Krishna and then he wanted a position greater than his great grandfather Brahma himself. And when he saw the Lord, he said, Sthana bhilashi tapasisthito ham tvam praptavan deva munindra guhyam kacham vichinvan apidevya ratnam swamin kritarthosmi varam nayache. He said, Krishna, he saw Krishna in six months, Lord Vishnu. I said, My Lord, Deva Munindra Guhyam, I have come to you, I have prayed to you, I have you know, done such severe austerity to get a sthana bhilashi, to get a very exalted position in this material world. But now I have gotten you, now I have, after having seen you, Which are, who, are, who is difficult to be seen even by the greatest of yogis and demigods. Deva Munindra Guhyam. You are hidden even to the greatest of yogis. They are meditating for thousands and thousands and millions of years, but they can't even reach you. They can't even. Panthastu koti shatavatsara sampragam yo vayo rathapi manaso munipunga vanam sopyasti yat prapadasim nyavichintya tatve govindamadi purusham tamaham bhajami. At the speed of mind they have been going, but they have not reached even the toes of your lotus feet, the toe nails of your lotus feet, what to speak of anything else. But I have been benedicted by the vision of your entire beautiful form. Now I comparing this benediction that you have already given me. What is the benediction? Just by showing yourself. Your audience is so um, valuable that now my desire to become greater than Brahma is kacham which in one. Now I feel that it is like a broken piece of glass that I was asking for. Instead, you being so merciful, you have benedicted me the, with a valuable diamond that is you. Now I don't want. Swamin Kritarthos me. I am completely satisfied. You have given me millions and billions and trillions of times more than what I asked for. And I can never repay this. Varam nayache. I don't want any more, anything more. He said this. But Lord Vishnu said, I will give you. <laughs> I will give you the thing that you asked for. Just to show that it is not that I will just trick my devotees into um, with my charming form and then I, they, will, they will never become rich. No, I am completely capable of bestowing them everything. So, he gave. So, when did Krishna give his devotees, Prabhupada or Prahlad Maharaj or Dhruv Maharaj, when they were actually pure devotees? So, because they were ready to handle that opulence, that glory, they would not, they would not go into this mode of like Hiranyakashipu, totally intoxicated with the power. He also had the glory, but he, what he did with that? Completely misused. But because they could handle the glory, he gave them. So, Prabhupada said similarly, Krishna can give us this entire movement, the entire world in 18 days. But are we ready? So, we have to prime ourselves for that. We, we just can't be satisfied just being this, a team of two people here and a three people there and a, and a one person here and a five people there spread across this globe. And, no. Prithiviti achi jata nagaradi gram sarvatar prachar hoi vamor naam Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said and that until that comes to pass, we cannot rest. Um, so that should be our, our mm, mood. Mm. So we, I mean, and with each, with each breath that we are inhaling and exhaling, we are just inviting death. The death is just becoming closer and closer and closer. Everyone is standing in the queue. Everyone is standing in the queue. And when the time comes, we will be executed by the laws of nature. And with each person being executed, we are going closer and closer and closer and closer. And we do not know actually, we are blindfolded. So we do not know whether we are the next or we are after a thousand people or a million people. We don't even know how close we are to that execution chop board. 
So, therefore, before that life comes to pass and we cannot do anything with this body anymore, as long as our body is still intact, let us use everything within our, um, you know, within our, within our grasp, within our control in the service of Krishna. So, that is the mood where I came started. Um, ever since 1980s, I think, Sunna Gopal Prabhu always felt, felt something was wrong. Many devotees in the world, you know, those who are sincere, they always felt something was wrong. And that's how they actually started and we need to dive into that mood. And uh, just before we go there, what we need to do, one more thing, I did not show in this whole series that this one. This is from Mantra, Ishopanishad Mantra 12. This is actually the, I mean, the, the, the destination of the bogus gurus, where they will go. This I did not show for some reason, I forgot. But we will see this here. And then we will go to what is our eyes um, you know, mission a little bit. And then we will close this. And that will be the end of the series. So, we will read this first. By a false display of religious sentiments, they present, this is from Ishopanishad Mantra 12 purport. By a false display of religious sentiments, they present a show of devotional service while indulging in all sorts of immoral activities. In this way, they pass as spiritual masters and devotees of God, such violators of religious principles have no respect for the authoritative acharyas, the holy teachers in the strict disciplic succession. They ignore the Vedic injunction, Acharya Pasana, one should worship the Acharya. This is exactly what is happening in Iskon now. And Krishna's statement in the Bhagavad Gita 4.2, chapter 4, text 2, Evam Parampara Praptam, this supreme science of God is received through the disciplic succession. Instead, they mislead the people in general, they Sorry, instead, to mislead the people in general, they themselves become so-called Acharyas, but they do not even follow the principles of the Acharyas. These rogues, Prabhupada used another word now, he used rascals, he used the word demons, he used the words now rogues. His words, not our words. These rogues are the most dangerous elements in human society. Because there is no religious government, they escape punishment by the law of the state. They cannot, however, escape the law of the Supreme who has clearly declared in the Bhagavad Gita that envious demons in the garb of religious propagandists shall be thrown into the darkest regions of hell. Bhagavad Gita 16.19 and 20. Sri Ishopanishad, Ishopanishad confirms that these pseudo-religionists are heading toward the most obnoxious place in the universe after the completion of their spiritual master business which they conduct simply for sense gratification. So basically, and this we have already shown, we have shown this the other day, 6, 7, 14. Leaders who have fallen into ignorance who mislead, and who mislead people by di- directing them to the path of destruction, as described in the previous verse, are in effect boarding a stone boat and so too are those who blindly follow them. A stone boat would be unable to float and would sink in the water with its passengers. Similarly, those who mislead people go to hell and their followers go with them. So in fact, this, this verse was spoken by Indra. Because he has offended, he had offended his own spiritual master at the time. In that context only he was saying this verse. So, how to rectify the situation? We have to give the greatest respect to Prabhupada. And greatest respect means not just saying Jaya Srila Prabhupada. That's not enough. <laughs> If Srila Prabhupada just sat in the Vrindavan the Radha Dhamma, the temple and just say, Jai Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur, that's lip service. Now we have to, Kaya Nama Vacha Manasendriya Irva Buddhyat Manava Nusruta Swabhavat. That is what we need to do.
ಪ್ರಭುಪಾದ Yeah, and of course, that will be the pleasure of Narayana. Yes, sir, Prasadat, Bhagavad Prasad. Oh. So, what are the things? Kāyena, by body. Vācha, words. Manasa, mind. Indriya, senses. Vā, buddhya, by intelligence. Atmana, Atmana means purified consciousness. Vā, anusruta, anusruta, followed. Swabhāva, according to one's own condition, nature. karoti yadyat sakalam parasmai narayana yeti samarpayet tat <clears throat> so with all our body mind and soul everything in you know completely immersed into this so um carry out the order basically you have to carry out the order so basically um this was something uh that was uh the thing that how i came started so briefly i will just go through the whole thing so in the 80s already Pra- prabhu was dealing with all these gurus in fact it is not that we i did not have any experience with gurus fortunately <laughs> but sunugopal prabhu went through the whole harrowing experience of dealing with the gurus and first it was hamsa dutta swami who was a gpc in singapore here and he created a mess and prabhu left for singapore and then he went to you know india there he was he was trained under various devotees and then for one and a half years in 1982 actually he was he joined in 1975 and then got initiated in 1977 january by prabhu pad and then there was um uh 1979 he tried to register the society here actually mind you singapore was the only country where shri prabhupad was not allowed in in 1971 he he was stopped at the immigration the only country even russia which was communist country at the time prabhupad could enter but singapore they did not allow him inside so it was very difficult and in 1979 it was i mean he applied for a registration of our society but then the government banned it they said no way you can have hari krishna in singapore it was only sure due to the sheer sheer determination of prabhu sunagopal prabhu that hari krishna exists in singapore um a lot of struggle it took him 22 years or yeah to get the society registered that much of struggle just to get the society registered it's like a matter of weeks or even days maybe in many countries but here it was a matter of 22 years from 1975 when he became a devotee all the way to 1997 so uh, anyway in between this guru's chaos happened and then he went to india and then after that he went to america in 1983 until 1985 for one and a half years or a little more than that he was in america in houston texas and um, he worked under tamal krishna goswami and tamal krishna goswami treated him as a god brother because he was first initiated prabhu prabhu was first initiation from prabhupada and second from hamsa dutta swami and therefore he was considered prabhu pad disciple of course <laughs> a little bit junior um so therefore he was working under tamal krishna goswami and he had that i mean a lot of they had friendly dealings as well at the time but also many times they had um, arguments regarding prabhupad most of the time prabhu did not argue with him but he just quietly disagreed with him especially when he used to when he said that conversation in that room especially when he said your heart is so small that you have only place for prabhupad that was uh, very disturbing for him but anyway he was still respectful to tamal krishna goswami and um, 1985 he came back to singapore and started preaching here without any registration he was just having he just stayed apart he was a brahmachari at the time um so he stayed um 
apart and then not from, what not with his family um and then he started preaching and the preaching went back to zero when he came back in 95 because after he left singapore there was nobody else preaching here and then when he came back he started preaching and then 88 around 89 he he came to know i mean he realized to get any further he you know he had to have a registration so what he did was he and the government wouldn't allow him to register a new society so he searched up the list of societies which were going debunk i mean i mean defunct societies which were not like functioning but they were existing only in name so he approached those committee members he found he shortlisted about 3 of them and then the first one he 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 went to the committee member and that man happened to be a uh, old class friend of his uh, prabhu's father so he was more than glad to hand over the society so that society had a big name long name but it was in short it was called shiv mandir shiv mandir means the temple of lord shiva so under the name of shiv mandir he was preaching krishna consciousness from 1989 to 1997 for eight good eight years and boomed it boomed and so many gurus were coming um tamal krishna goswami came gaur govind swami came jayapada goswami came uh who's that mm. lokanath swami came here and uh, even even who's that mm. mahavishnu swami then uh, some of them i forget so i've heard this so many times but i've not been there at the time i was still a kid somewhere lost in the material world in india uh then uh, so many brahmacharis at that time this temple used to have about 22 or something brahmacharis in singapore and it was on fire but then the experience that sunugopal prabhu had with this iskon was the devotees who joined up they were very enthusiastic in the beginning and everything as soon as they got initiated as soon as they got initiated they their allegiance went to the guru and now they never listen to the they they stop listening to the temple president as mm, my guru is my authority you are temple president who are you and they were disciples of all kinds of gurus like all these gurus that i mentioned so each time sunugopal prabhu worked hard and trained batches of devotees and when a guru comes he will you know offer them up for initiation and they'll get initiated and all the guru dakshin man goes to the guru and their service their allegiance everything goes to the guru and anything advice they will take from the guru and not from the temple president and it became a very polarizing situation in the temple and then this disciples guru will say to that disciples guru i mean sorry sorry this guru's disciples will say to that guru's disciples that no no my guru is better than there was infighting there was all these things going on and each will try to promote their guru you know and this devotee joins and then each of these camps of different gurus they will try to pray on him and then get them to their camp their guru and this way that way and then in the in the politics some devotees left you know like left the movement and all these things were happening at the time and when the guru comes he is not mature enough to handle it all supposed to be a pure devotee so all the all of them and none of them are none of them were and every one of them was just playing politics they will they would side with their disciples rather than with the temple president and with the temple management and there was i mean horrible experiences and then the, the gurus they come here and then they have programs in the hotels instead of the temple and some of them don't wake up for mangal many of them don't wake up for mangal aarti as well and one of them was a special case never wakes up and always has an excuse and you know don't chant his rounds doesn't chant his rounds and uh, people saw him hardly chanting one two rounds in the, in the whole day never with his pit bag and now he can't even chant um i'm trying as much as possible not to mention any names but you know so these things happened so um it was very disturbing for prabhu prabhu always was thinking why why did shri prabhupa just leave this whole movement like this even if he would have said that get initiated by this dog i would have done that but why didn't he say who is the one who is going to be a successor and what was his how to understand his whole situation now he was always thinking like this 
Then when 1997, these documents came out and IRM, ISKCON Revival Movement, that was, they were instrumental in compiling everything, all the evidence and they brought out this whole thing and wow, first thing, Sundagopal Prabhu was the first ISKCON affiliated temple. He said, I am following this system. He was the first, more than glad, more than glad to have received this information and he was first to act upon it as well. That's another important thing. To get the information is one thing and to agree with it is one thing, but to act upon it takes real guts. So he was, um, you know, to go against the grain, to go against the system, it is huge. In fact, at one point, I think in 1989, just before he got married, when he was sannyasi, I mean, so when he was a brahmachari, um, he was contemplating sannyas at one point of time. Then, of course, then after that, he got married. But then, uh, at that time, Iskon offered him that, you know, you take sannyas and, you know, you can also be a guru, you know, you can be one of the gurus. Prabhu said, no, no, I don't want to, I don't want to be a part of the, all, all that. Then anyway, he got uh, married after 14 years of brahmacharya. Then, uh, he was still preaching. He was not once, not a single day did he miss his Mangalarati, did he miss his morning program. Even sannyasis couldn't keep, keep up with his standard. When the gurus came here, although he was a grihastha, the gurus could, could not keep up with the standard at all. And uh, even Bhakti Charu Swami, you know, you know, he was having this pizza with a mushroom in it, and, and then he wanted him to take it, and he said, "I don't take mushrooms." So, oh, okay, you know, he was like. So, they felt very uncomfortable in Singapore, the Swamis, because here the standards were like very high and that's what it, <laughs> there was one Swami who even said that, oof, you can't breathe in Singapore, you know, yeah, because in the temple, you know, everything is so strict and everything is like, and you can't, you can't rest for a while, you know, you can't like, you know, you can't have, you, know, you can't miss a Mangalarati, you know. <laughs> I mean, that's that's basic thing, you know, you have to. I mean, in the beginning, it is a little bit of forcing, but eventually, we should feel that, how can you feel good in a day when you miss the Mangalarati? So, we should get to that. So, um, so anyway, coming back to the point. So, he was preaching like this and... Um, 1997, yeah. So, at that time, two things happened. On one side, the Ritvik system news came out. And yeah, by the way, as Ayappa said in the comments, so every time people would come to the temple and say, hey, I thought it was Shiv Mandir written outside and then why I come here, where is, where is Lord Shiva? And every time they would ask, then every time they would, they would say, say the Shiva means actually auspicious. So, this is auspicious temple. Um, <laughs> they would just cover it up instead of telling the whole long story. Sometimes, I mean, if they had time, then of course the story would go out. But, you know, otherwise it was just like, yeah, Shiva means auspicious, so this is very auspicious. Krishna consciousness is very auspicious <laughs> in that way. <laughs> so, um, the temple was going on. So, in 1997, what happened? Ritvik system news was one thing. Another thing is that the government, um, they offered that, oh, they called Sundagopal Prabhu up for a meeting. A very special committee from the government. It's a intelligence department. So, they um, called him up for a meeting and then said, hmm, Sundagopal, you have sneaked into Singapore, huh? You have made possible this Hare Krishna movement in Singapore. Because they told him, they told him in 1979, point blank, he was told, he was called by the same intelligence department and he went there and then they told him, ban, don't even try it in Singapore. That's what he got. So, when in 1997, he, he was, then he said, wow, you sneaked into Singapore, huh? Then they said, all right, you know, we have checked, we have done all background checks and everything. We don't find anything wrong with your character or anything like that. So, we are thinking of awarding you a society, but you have to close down this society, this old society, and we will give you a new society, but you should not be affiliated with this con. You should not have any financial support from ISKCON or legal bindings with ISKCON worldwide. And so he said, okay, fine. 
are you prepared to sign the document yeah so he signed but then he asked um, can i at least have the books of our guru shri prabhupada yeah books is all right they said oh wow this is krishna's arrangement and he even thought wow even is con also is not agreeing to you know that to this ritvik thing and to be you know not affiliated with this con is maybe kind of a blessing even so he thought and actually it turned out to be a blessing as we can see in hindsight but <clears throat> so it happened like this and he started preaching openly so he closed down that society and then we that's why our name is like that shri krishna mandir we had to have an we had to have a name of society not iskon or hari krishna or something like that so that's how it became shri krishna mandir so which means temple of shri krishna so that's how it all started why we have this name shri krishna mandir so they asked him to choose his own name but not iskon hari krishna something like that. so he said shri krishna mandir and said okay all right fine <laughs> so that's how it started so as long as we can have the books of prabhupada you know it's it's a blessing it's in itself so in that way movement the hari krishna movement had become manifest in singapore although shri prabhupada was not allowed here but by his mercy his movement is going on and eventually we were, he was waiting prabhu was waiting that his con would change and in the meantime he you know he collaborated with madhu pandit prabhu and actually he knew madhu pandit prabhu because of a marriage that happened here of one of our devotees and then the girl was from uh, the mata ji was from bangalore temple and because they were this doing this match making and then that's how prabhu also went there and this brahmachari wanted to get married and married and then <clears throat> he went there and in the course of meeting there and then he showed this this whole ritvik system and madhubani prabhu read it many times and then he also was convinced and he also said okay i will also follow this so like that and also already this adridharan prabhu another disciple of prabhupada he from in, he was running the temple in kolkata iskon kolkata so he also joined up so these three temples were the big you know uh, it was a big progress at the time you know three iskon temples have walked out of the system and then um, accepted the ritvik system so this was the thing that you know if you can have more temples to agree to this and you know come back come on to this uh, following the system then that would be the success and that was that's what they thought would happen and it would have been perfect if that happened so they were having these conferences with iskon leadership and iskon leadership first they agreed to listen to the whole thing and then they had these discussions and uh, they presented themselves and then everything was being you know um, whatever arguments they had they were countered and everything so in the end they did not they were not left with any strong arguments but still they said that no in fact one of them said how can this new disciples you know who are just joining now can be said as our god brothers you know this had um, you know some meaningless pride and then they just didn't want to buy into this whole ritvik thing ritvik um, procedure so in that way and over time especially 1998 2000 and even there, there was one convention here in malaysia as well it happened and alachua so sunugopal prabhu went there also alachua and there was a meeting then in 1998 that was that was the first meeting actually lot of iskon people came there but in the one in bombay which prabhu did not i think attend but the one in malaysia he attended again and there were not as many uh, representatives from the iskon side so it was they didn't want to hear this so anyway so that happened until 2000 around there so then after that slowly 2000 i mean we were just waiting prabhu was waiting and the disciples in 1997 when he announced that he was ritvik then all the all his men who were disciples of different gurus and you know all this initiated by all these gurus they did not agree to this whole thing some of them agreed very few of them handful of them but the rest of them they did not agree and then they left they left the temple and they said no we will just they were in their homes only and then practicing like that and over the years over few years then they started in some hindu temples having some programs and after many years then they have started having their own place a small place like that so that's how they are doing it they have you know anyway whatever is going on in their thing nothing of our concern but in our case 2006 was when it was almost 10 years since the ritvik system has been 
I mean, is out in the world. So, but ISKCON was not even budging. In fact, they were growing stronger and stronger against it. And that's when Sunugopal Prabhu and even Madhupandit Prabhu, they had temples to run and they were devotees trained up for so many years, but they were not getting initiated and just waiting for the GBC to change and it was not happening and it was just, you know, just waiting for nothing, hoping against hope. So then finally this, they, they realized that there is a need of initiation. We can't just wait indefinitely for this. And that will only make them stronger and stronger. So we need to get this off the ground. So then they had their meetings with their temples and then here also Prabhu had a meeting with our temples, our few temples that were there, only like three or four temples at that time in Malaysia and in Singapore. And um, he started initiating there in Bangalore and Sunugopal Prabhu started initiating here on behalf of Prabhupada and I was in the second such initiation ceremony. There was one on in February 2006 on Nityananda Prabhu, Nityananda Trayodasi and on the Gauru Purnima day on, in 2006 was when we were initiated along with Snugopal Prabhu's son at the time. Um, his wife had just passed away in 2005 at the time. So his son was about 15 years old and he became Brahmachari and um, uh, he was initiated when he was 16, I think. And then, like that, and two other devotees also were initiated. Prem Bikas Prabhu, I think, who is also in the uh, audience here. And uh, also Ujjwal Prabhu, who is in Bangladesh now, preaching there. So, we got initiated, Gaurav Day, 2006. And after that, it was, it was going and, I mean, initiations were going on. And uh, 2000... 12, 11 actually. Then Prahlad Bhakta Prabhu, who was here since 2008, then um, he he went to Pondicherry, Puducherry in, in India, and he started his preaching there in 2011. He was a software engineer here, and then he got with our temple, and then he went. So that was our first, like, uh, branching out. Hmm. So um, Puducherry was the first, and then after that. It was still unstable at the time. Then 2000, it was just starting out. I mean, so and then 2012, uh, we started with our first trip to New Zealand. And actually, yeah, because the 2011 May, I think they came here, New Zealand devotees, and a group of devotees from New Zealand. They actually walked out from their temple when they came to know about the Ritwik system, and then they did not know where to go. And then they found us. They actually went to Iskon Bangalore, but they were not treated nicely there. They were actually put aside and you know quarantined or something like that. They were not treated well, and they were actually when they went for in 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 hope of cooperation and you know how to set up their thing in New Zealand and all that. But and, and as we also had some similar experience. So um, anyway, that happened in 2012, and uh, before that, actually in 2010 or something. Unnecessarily, there was some. That's why I don't want to mention many names because, in the future, if it you know if it comes to a place where again these groups of Ritviks can cooperate with each other, that would be nice, you know. So unfortunately, these things happen. That somehow or other, uh, we until now we don't know why, but Iskon Bangalore they distanced themselves with from us. In fact, there was one once an incident. Anyway, I don't want to go too much into personal incidences, but. Yeah, so, so because we want, ultimately we want cooperation, right? So, we don't hate those who actually want to follow Prabhupada, but at the same time, we just can't wait for everything to go nicely. We just have to do it and, you know, by Prabhupada's mercy, hopefully things will, you know, come into order eventually. So, um, yeah, there was some, you know, somehow or other, until now we can't understand why. So, there has been that distance. So, the New Zealand devotees also felt the same thing and they came here and we started uh, co uh, I mean, cooperating with them and then, we, in fact, we had trips to New Zealand and we had even Rathiyatras there. And it was nice, but unfortunately, um, there were a few families actually, Grihasthas there and only one of those families is now with us. <laughs> the others, especially due to that leader there. So, that was also another... Um, not a very pleasant experience again because they were not following the, the th main thing is this again they were not following the sadhana morning no waking up 
and no Mangal Arati and only two Brahmacharis were doing it there and uh, now they are Grahasthas and now actually they are with ISKM. Only they were doing it then and then they, they jumped ship and then they are with us now. So, um, um, they were having these problems and they were not reading properly and no chanting and even other things, even sinful activities were happening there, breaking of principles. So, that's why even eventually, so one family came out, Hanuman Prabhu who is now in New Zealand in Nelson and then also Chaitanya Leela Prabhu and Sankarshan Prabhu who are now in Australia and they are preaching there nicely. So, these things happen and um, we also on the, in 2012, in the beginning we went to New Zealand and then in the mid year we went to um, China. And China we went because we wanted some, these huge inflatable Jagannath because for our Rathyatra we wanted them done and then in China it was affordable and then we, we, need to, we needed to communicate with them. The only problem is communication because we don't know the language. So we needed to find some Chinese devotees and we knew actually some Chinese devotees. But um, Sunugopal Prabhu actually was contacting the senior devotees there. Again, I don't want to mention names here. I want to keep it as you know, devoid of names as possible. But uh, so there were some senior devotees there, and Prabhupada wanted to. Uh, sorry, sorry, what I'm saying. So Nugopal Prabhu wanted to, um, you know, communicate with them, and then he was trying to push him, or you know, suggest to him that you know, let's cooperate and then move the movement in China, because we already have a few devo devotees. And one of the, actually the senior devotee was, uh, I mean, he 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 accepts the Rithvik system. But then he was not doing anything. He was just in Hong Kong, doing not doing nothing there. And actually, two of them, two of such devotees there, senior. But then doing nothing, no preaching, and they were they were doing their own businesses, and then and they were seen as senior devotees there. And the Chinese devotees, they were under them. So Prabhu was actually some from 2006 itself. He was trying to you know, you know, let's start something, let's move this movement forward, because ever since. His wife passed away when he was 50 years old, 2005. You know, Prabhu took it as a blessing. Um, of course, his wife was very cooperative, very nice. But then, um, since he passed away, what can be done? So, he took it as a blessing and said, No, now is the rest of my life should be traveling and preaching. And then, uh, that's how in 2006 onwards, he was always thinking, you know, where to go and how to preach and how to expand his movement and how to spread this Ritwik system. So, in that way, it was going on. And um, but the devotees were not doing anything, and so in the in the, in 2012, for that inflatable Jagannath, that big Jagannath, 20 feet Jagannath Baldev Subhadra, I think you must have seen those in the photos of our Rathyatra. So to make those, we went to China. So then we actually physically met them, the devotees. But the senior devotee was still in, in Hong Kong. But then we saw that the whole scene was very. Everybody was just fighting among themselves, although they were so-called Ritviks. Then Prabhu saw the whole thing and said, see, you need to buckle up in your sadhana and then he, because the whole problem why this infighting is because when there is passion and ignorance, these modes make us fight. When we are in the mode of goodness, we will not do this. So why we will be doing this uh, devotional service in the mode of passion and ignorance? Because the morning program, which is, you know, which gets us to be in the mode of goodness, that we are compromising with. So if we... You know, whenever anybody came to Prabhupada with a problem, then Prabhupada always said, Are you chanting 16 rounds? Are you following the four regulatory principles? Are you following the Mangalarati? Are you reading my books? Are you doing the Sankirtan? So, these are the things he would, he would actually, before even going into the problem, he would see whether you are doing these things first. If you are doing these things, you should not be having a problem. That, that is the meaning. So, every time he would always judge a problem, I mean, judge, I mean, um, get an understanding of the problem by seeing whether who is following first. So always that that is the main thing. So when that doesn't happen, then everything just falls apart. We can we can't just move this movement or you know preach with, externally without any internal strength. Purity is the force, as Prabhupada said. The force is purity. So our own internal personal purification must be very, taken very seriously. If we have to be instruments of Krishna's plan and, Prabh and Prabhupada's plan, we have to be you know a knife is good, but you know if a knife is not sharp, then we can't cut with it, right? The vegetables. So, if we want to be, if we just say we are instruments of Prabhupada but don't do anything, we are like the blunt knife, we can't do anything. So, we have to sharpen ourselves so that we can be an effective instrument of Prabhupada. Otherwise, we will not be an instrument, it's just lip service, right? 
so therefore our personal sharpening has to be there and therefore our our we have to be a good instrument in Prabhupada's hands so we have to follow the rules of Prabhupada so so he set up this morning program he said do this first so in that way China boomed I mean the devotees like you know it was suddenly you know all the devotees were united of course there was some you know um, a rare few who wanted to be the controllers who wanted to be the who wanted to keep it suppressed because they just wanted to be known as senior devotees but they don't do anything really substantial so they were unhappy about it but the rest of the devotees were so enthused and that's where the whole thing started and then the same thing happened in philippines and um, similarly um, it slowly took over and then um, even in philippines also we had the same experience that the senior devotee was not again following anything and he was not happy with the, our success even though he was so called prabhupadanuga he was not happy that preaching is going on now there is a temple no he was not happy he was, in fact until now he is only doing us harm than any good so this is what i am saying so if somebody is preaching everybody should cooperate with that and you know not be envious of that so in that way so preaching happened and then anyway we, we, we went on anyway with whoever wants to be part of the movement and dedicate their lives we went on so those who want to just complain and those who want to be envious let them be what we can what can we do what can we do so we just went on and um, in other countries also it opened up eventually and europe and russia and and um, we have of course a handful of devotees in america who are also communicating regularly with us um, but haven't we don't have a temple yet it hasn't come to that situation yet but in india of course india it actually boomed even more and then we have amalapuram we have a you know group in other you know other places as well even in bengal in orissa it's, it's moving so in this way we have a few um and then in bangladesh some of our devotees went back from singapore who were here and they were trained and then they went back and they started preaching there in bangladesh and um where else um yeah in this way we just reached out and then in 2017 we had this we released this is 77 paper and the ritvik video we understood i mean we have to get on the internet bandwagon and the social media the, the media outreach so let the message out and that's why we are having this live streams and all these things let the message out and those who are sincere those who want to follow they can follow you know it's up there you can see so in this way we are trying to reach out and that's how basically our plan and then who wants to get initiated and then of course everybody must be following and then eventually they get initiated you know of course they have to follow and they have to show that they're following and that's how it has went i mean it has gone so far and that's how on the, that's the principles on which we are cooperating in the beginning we tried cooperating with you know various various actually many i mean ritvik associations but what we saw was yes some devotees did join but there was so much skepticism and no much uh, you know just saying pra- pra- you know prabhupada is the guru is not enough i mean when prabhupada was there um also everybody was for prabhupada right but there were so many disagreements going on even within then because saying prabhupada is the first step and then there has to be all the the good cooperation the mood between vaishnavas all the you know the dealings you know the preeti lakshanam you know the nectar of instruction verse 4 and all these things have to happen and the training has to be proper you know you know we have to be everything has to be you know the vaishnava dealings must be proper mm, so sometimes you know and and then the following of course we have to follow our sadhana strictly so strict sadhana and and the reading of philosophy is at the at the base of this whole thing and then there has to be vaishnava dealings with properly established vaishnavas we can't just have a friendly relation with somebody who is not following the instruction it, it will be impossible because at one point of time uh, when we will find out then definitely those who are following will suggest to the those who are not following please follow and then they'll get upset about it and then oh why why you are you not trying to control me or trying? it's not about that i mean it's about following prabhupada's instruction so they'll become a rift so we just can't be artificially friendly it has to come swajati means must be on the same standard we have to all follow for our own good for the for no for the good of the preaching and everything so then we can cooperate 
and we can always cooperate you know um, so that has to be the base and that's where ISKM is coming from and that is what we offer and that's what that's how we want to serve Srila Prabhupada and all the sincere Vaishnavas who want to follow Srila Prabhupada and we're also reaching out to those you know is con devotees and whoever you know can who can get in touch with this message and you know we have to reach out more far and wide and at the same time we have to preach to the newer people not just try to preach to these con devotees we go out book distribution and preach to the new people make more devotees that's 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 the whole thing so that's where I ask him is at now so basically that's what we are we stand for and that's our service to everybody so kindly uh, sorry I have taken such a long time it was a long rant but how many of you are left here oh, still you are listening <laughs> okay thank you very much so now we'll go into any questions that are there and then we will wrap up the session and basically that's the end of this Ritvik series mm, you can always contact us through email or, or whatsapp or facebook and all these social media platforms and that way we can stay connected and we can take this even further all right so let's go to the questions Vishnu Teja asks Prabhu, how can we protect our ISKM from demons that want to infiltrate like in ISKCON? Well, as I said, we have to become strong in ourselves. The demons are not anywhere else but in our own hearts. The lust, anger, greed, the anarthas that are in our heart are the demons. So as long as we clear those things, so we will be perfect. So then we will know, of course, how to deal with anybody who wants to you know, infiltrate. If we are strong and together, there is nothing that can stop this movement. So, we have to be strong in our sadhana and we have to be together and we have to always introspect ourselves first. Before even we consider anybody else as demons, we should always think that I can be the demon. So, I have so many demonic tendencies in my myself, so I need to clear my, uh, my own heart. The purification must happen. So, then only can I serve Srila Prabhupada properly. So, we have to always concentrate on our own, uh, you know, mistakes. And then we will know, Krishna will give intelligence, Prabhupada will give us intelligence how to conduct this whole mission. As Prabhupada said, Krishna can give us the whole world in 18 days, but, days, but you know, um, um, are we ready? Are we ready for it? So, are we ready to handle the glory? You know, so, glory means not our glory, it's, it's Prabhupada's glory, it's Krishna's glory, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's glory. But we need to serve that movement. If it, if it gets to that stage, can we handle all that? So we have to be, as Prabhupada said, purity is the force. So we need, we need to be pure. So Virendra Prabhu is asking, I am reading ISKCON texts such as Bhagavad Gita as it is, Bhagavad Puran and other texts. So they are bona fide with respect to ISKM. So my knowledge of ISKCON text is admissible to ISKM. No, it's not. I mean, it's Prabhupada's text, right? So it's not, it's not anything wrong, you know. Hmm. We have to read Prabhupada's books. It's not Iskon's books as in the Guru's books. Th- those books, yes, we, are, we should not read. I mean, you know, all those journey home and all that stuff. It's some rubbish. We are dead against that. But Prabhupada's books, yeah, we should read. And, um, yeah, so the Prabhupada's books we have to read. Uh, Chaitanya Chandra Prabhu. Question is, how Gaudiya deviated? How Gaudiya Mat deviated? So, basically... Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur did not um, name any Acharya that would uh, follow him. But of course, he knew. He already said that. When time comes, he will do everything about Prabhupada. He said that. But then, he did not name a particular Acharya who will follow. He, con- he asked them to form a GBC and conduct the mission. So, who, Ch- Prabhupada says that whoever would come out self-effulgent, he will be the next Acharya. You know, that's what Prabhupada, I mean, that's what Bhaktisiddhanta left. He did not le- leave a Ritvik system. But Prabhupada left a Ritvik system. So, um, so that's how he, that happened. So, but they jumped on the bandwagon. Oh, no, no, there has to be some guru. There has to be a successor. And they made somebody gurus and then it, the whole thing fell. And that's how it all fell apart in Gaudiya Mat. And Chaitanya Chandra Prabhu is again asking, which software you are using to read those books online, please? Well, um, actually, when I do my personal reading, I use the original books um, in, in ebook format on my Kindle. Um, but for the reference and all these things, or for learning shlokas, you know, quick navigation, as when I have to show this on the screen like this here, this is Pocket Vedas. So this is actually uh, the changed version of the books, but then, you know, that's the only tool available at the moment, so we will use this. Um, so, I mean, most of it are the same, 
some minor differences are there but to get a general understanding this this is good enough for now so this is pocket vedas this is the app that i use here and there is a veda base which is on the laptop but if i run that program along with the live streaming my laptop is quite old 5 years old so it can heat up and it can hang and it can just die <laughs> so um i have been using that for years but just recently which is a few days i think maybe a couple of weeks ago i found out this this that i can use the ipad so i'm using this uh, this thing now so that's the app pocket vedas and there is another also veda base which is an app on the not only this is not only for ipad even android phones have it and pocket vedas and veda base these two so pocket vedas have about 13 books whereas veda base has books conversations lectures everything everything letters everything but then the navigation is more smoother in pocket vedas whereas navigation in the veda base software is a bit uh, not not as friendly uh, and even in the veda base the ipad version or the apple version is easier to navigate than the android version but then you can still make do if you get used to it so yeah so these are the softwares that i use so virendra prabhu is asking iskon devotees are firm to their diksha guru worship how can we attract them to ritvik system in iskm we can only take the horse to the trout but we cannot make it drink so we can just show the system we can just show what is the truth but then if they don't want to accept what can we do that is the independence everybody has krishna is himself is coming and speaking bhagavad gita but still there are so many millions of us who you know they don't follow you know they don't want to take it up and so the independence is always there whether they want to take it up or not but we have to show it to as many as we can these contributors or even otherwise so we have to show but then uh, if they are sincere they will they will eventually come and eventually as we grow more and more we don't only concentrate on these contributors but also we preach to the new people i mean go out book distribution and you know make new devotees and conduct programs regular programs weekly once at least you know have a feast sunday feast kind of program and let them have listen to kirtan and uh, present everything properly and we have to have our, ourselves dress as devotees and you know, everything properly like standard and then uh, the kirtan and prasadam and philosophy in this way get them to reading the books and all that so all these things are necessary so as we grow in number as we grow in size eventually they will notice us and you know there are many in iskon now who are just sitting on the fence they understand that there is a big problem in iskon but they can't move out because they don't have anywhere else to go There's, and they don't have the strength to they can't muster up the strength to start something on their own they feel so weak or alone or something like that demoralized so just staying put with the whole thing so if they find a viable solid alternative then definitely they will be you know attracted to this and so if they are and if so those people will only join at a later stage of growth so it takes a lot of guts and courage to join something at a very nascent stage at a very beginning stage because it takes a lot of work a lot of sacrifice a lot of surrender to move the movement from scratch you know when prabhupad is easy to i mean it's easy to join the iskon movement now and you know be taken care of by the temple authorities and you know have every facility and everything But just imagine how Prabhupada started it all. I mean, he went alone. He suffered a ha- two heart attacks, massive, in the on the ship, and then he went there and he was. I mean, he always said, "I am at the fag end of my life, old man, strange and a strange place," and never. It's a cultural shock for him. He never, he never, he has never been outside India until then for the, all his life, and then now he's in a place where it's completely different from what India is, and then he has to preach there. and nobody knows i mean whether he would even last there and the cold would might might kill him or anything might happen you know and that amount of sacrifice risk and surrender that is what got this movement to this place that it is and the iskon gurus are just riding on that wave you know of that that opulence that iskon has now but then to again start this whole you know rhythmic system from scratch again there will be a lot of sacrifices so there will be so many difficult as bhakti sadan saraswati thakur said there will be uh, the one who surrendered to krishna his life his path is set with thorns it will not be a smooth journey 
So we need to we need to be ready for that. Anything for Prabhupada, anything for Krishna should be our should be our mindset. It's not that I want to be what I will get if I join Ritwix, what I will get if I join ISKM. No, you're not gonna get anything. What you're gonna get, we are not even thinking about it. What we need to think is what I can do for Prabhupada. It's not what I will get. No. What can we do to Prabhupada for Prabhupada? So what service I can do? So that is the whole a disciple means uh, what is that? Um, Brahmachari Gurukule Vasandanto Guru Hitam. You know what is Guru Hitam? Only for the sake of Guru. 7.12.1 Guru Hitam. You see this Guru Hitam. What is this Guru Hitam? Only for the benefit of the Guru, not for one's own benefit, not one's personal benefit. So that should be our mood. So what I can do? Yeah, anything, any inconvenience I want to, I am prepared to undergo for Prabhupada. So that should be the mood. So whether one is a Brahmachari, Grihastha, it's not only for Brahmachari. Brahmachari. What is the definition of Brahmachari? Not just one who is in a saffron cloth or you know celibate. Brahma Charati Iti Brahmachari. One who walks the path of spiritual life is a Brahmachari actually. Of course, there is Brahmachari Ashram, but any disciple should be like this. Whoever is a disciple of the Sadguru, I mean the, the real Guru, bona fide spiritual master, he has to be like this as a Brahmachari mood. You know, I have to be Guru or Hitam, even a Grahastha, even a Sanyasi, whatever it is. So, Guru or Hitam, only for the benefit of the Guru. So, what can I do? Dasavat. See, Narada Muni said, a, a student should practice completely controlling his senses. He should be submissive and should have an attitude of firm friendship for the spiritual master. With a great vow, the brahmachari should live at the Gurukul only for the benefit of the Guru. Of course, the grahasthas cannot live at Gurukul. They will live at house, but still only for the benefit of Guru. Sannyasis, they will pre- travel and preach. Again, only for the benefit of Guru. Just like Prabhupada. My Guru Maharaj ordered me to preach in the English-speaking world. I will go. Sannyasi went. So, that is Guru or Hitam. So, what can I do for Prabhupada? So, that mood will actually, um, you know, be successful. You know, that will actually got, get results. And even if it doesn't get results, just do it. We just have to do it. By mercy of Prabhupada and Krishna, it will all manifest. How will it manifest? What will happen? Who knows? You know, Prabhupada, when he went to America, he just went. His visa only lasted one month. With that one month visa, he went to America. What, <laughs> what assurance of a future there was in America when Prabhupada went there? There was nothing. But Krishna's assurance will be there. So we just can't calculate materially. Yes, there have to be some calculated moves, but then the rest we have to depend on Krishna for. That is called hope. Hmm. Exequiel from Philippines. He's asking, can I can one get initiated even one is who is still associated with a non-devotee? You mean in the sense of you're working with them or your job entails you to work with them or something? I don't know how you are meaning this. But we should just associate with them as much as is just necessary for that work if you are working with them. And then not have intimate connections. If you can preach to him Krishna consciousness, oh, well and good. But if you can't, or if he's somehow against the whole thing, then just deal with him officially, cordially, and then keep away. Just as you would go and in a market, you would you would ask the person how much is this, and you know, and then you that is talking also. But that's not you are not associating with the shopkeeper. You're just buying whatever you want and whatever how much ever is necessary for that dealing. That's it, and then come out. But Preeti Lakshanam, the, the, the symptoms of affection, the symptoms of, you know, like when you have best friends, right? There, there is, you know, you reveal your mind and, you know, you share your, your, you know, all that, that is, has to be done with the devotees. So that means association. If you just officially cordially deal for that work, that is not really association. Association means when you get influenced by their association and you become close to them and start to accept their qualities. You inev- invariably will if you, I mean, we invariably, not just, um, uh, not you, every one of us. I mean, we all, if we associate with them intimately, then 
we invariably will imbibe those qualities. So we should try to help them, can't then just, you know, just official cordial and then come out. So if you can do that and associate more with devotees, yeah, we can get initiated, why not? Anybody who is following all the rules of Prabhupada, 16 rounds, following four regulatory principles, Mangalarti, eating only Krishna Prasadam, yeah, they can become initiated. But of course, they have to be um, recommended by uh, authority. Like Prabhupada also, he took, he took the recommendation of the temple presidents. So like that, there has to be some, what is that called? Uh, accountability. Accountability is a must. So that is also necessary. Hmm? So Virendra Prabhu asks, uh, why the 11 Ritviks appointed by Srila Prabhupada became gurus after the demise of Prabhupada? Uh, how can Ritviks transform into self-appointed gurus in his con- What? Or how come Ritviks transform into... That's what, they just speculated on the order. They just they just thought, now these 11, now we automatically after Prabhupada's passing away, we will become gurus. So they just assumed, is their assumption. So the whole thing was built on assumption. Then, um, Krishna Smaranam Prabhu, oh, he's from USA, wow. <laughs> Should the GBC be considered responsible for some of the calamities of this present time? Well, <laughs> this coronavirus, yeah, I mean, I cannot say entirely, but definitely to some, to some degree, you know. Because the only reason why these things happen is because of lack of Krishna consciousness, but then again, there will be people who are always demoniac and they will not join. But at least, if our movement grows and grows and grows more, there will be more chance of more people joining. And that was definitely hampered by unnecessarily undermining the movement by introducing the guru hoax within ISKCON. So in that way, yeah, so there is some degree of, definitely some degree of, uh, involvement in this. That's why it's Jiva Himsana. As long as we don't preach Krishna consciousness, it is Jiva Himsana. We are committing violence. We are committing violence. So, yeah, there is. It, if we don't execute the order of the spiritual master, we are committing violence to every single living entity on the planet. <clears throat> Oni Prabhu from Bangladesh. In which class does a Prakrita Bhakta belong? Oh, okay, this was the answer. So, it's a third class devotee. So if he's not careful, he can fall down. But if he is careful, then he becomes second class and first class. Ayapa Prabhu. Is Shiv Mandir in, is a North Indian organization that Prabhu brought? No. I mean, you know. You know, it was just a circumstantial whatever. Shiv Mandir. Oh, okay, okay. Now I understand. Is Shiv Mandir a North, a North, Indian, North Indian organization? Uh, I think so, probably. I don't know. What was the first Ritvik initiated disciple from Srila Prabhupada, uh, from, from, from Sundagopal Prabhu? Okay. Who was that? Yeah, actually, that person is no more with us. He's left. He's kind of with us, but doesn't come so often. He's there, I think, still giving donations. Um, he's still there, but um, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, we didn't, uh, anyway. I don't want to name names because I don't want to, them to feel bad because we want to keep the doors open, you know, they want to, if they want to come back, if they want to change their ways, you know, if they want to cooperate again. He's, he's, he's not against us actually, but he's just that he's not been coming for very long. That's, yeah. So, um, Virendra Prabhu, can I become a full-time Brahmachari in Ritvik system under the guidance of senior temple devotees? Most definitely, yeah, most definitely. We want many, 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 many thousands of such <laughs> dedicated devotees and uh, that will be, you know, you know, that is, that is what we want to, you know, <laughs> we need many thousands of people to move, push this movement forward. You are most welcome Prabhuji, Virendra Prabhu. So you can contact uh, your nearest, nearest, I think you are from India if not wrong, so you can contact Prahlad Prabhu there. You can always, I mean, you can also stay in touch with me. I think you did send me probably a friend request. I'm not sure. I need to see back again. I don't get time much to go into that Facebook much, but yeah, we we can always stay connected. And uh, Kunal Jaiswal Prabhu, when Kirtan program will commence in Kirtan program in Singapore? Kirtan program, what is that? Or maybe he's asking about the Sunday program. Oh, we have to wait for the 
for the covid 19 uh, i mean those quarantine to lift to be lifted so until then we can't have a program at this point the authorities have that's why our doors are closed completely closed for the public has been closed since April, 6th of april here so ever since we have been closed so we have to wait for the situation to subside so until then we can't even say when <laughs> Be open, but you can always join us in these classes every day. Ayapa Prabhu, is it possible to use prabhupadbooks.com website when an individual gives a lecture? How it differed from Pocket Vedas? Okay, um, the navigation is very difficult. The navigation is not as fast as this. And the Pocket Vedas app lives locally on the on the device. And whereas the Prabhupada Books is online. So each time we go to a next verse. It has to go and load up that page and when we're connected to the internet here i mean like in the live stream you will only understand this problem when you're live streaming that because so much bandwidth is taken by the live streaming the devices somehow take very long if it, if i was not live streaming the pages would load up faster actually i do use that prabhupadbooks.com all the time whenever i want to take any reference i take from there but then um when i'm live streaming it takes so long to load up a page. I think if you have joined me in um, in the earlier sessions of Strengthening Foundations, you would have seen or how the screen was all getting stuck. You know, it was all not as smooth as it is now. Why it is so smooth these past few sessions is because I've been using this system. Everything is locally here and the internet is only being used for live streaming and no other bandwidth is used for anything else. And that's how it is smooth. So, so yeah, these are some of the things that need to be ironed out. So, and also, uh, you know, like if, if I want to show some verse, just now I showed from 11 to 36 or from Mukundamala Stotra, they're not again available in that prabhupadbooks.com. I have to again go back to this Veda base again. So these things are there. So that's the reason why we use this. Basically because of the speed. Then we have Chaitanya Chandra Prabhu asking, Prabhu, you didn't answer question, how Gaudiya failed, falls down and how, because every Acharya and Gaudiya did his part and create his mission, how it was failed. Uh, how did Gaudiya Mutt fail? Or how did Gaudiya Acharya fail? I don't understand now, what is the question? Uh, I don't really understand. I answered the question, why Gaudiya Mutt failed? Because they did not take the order of the spiritual master. Um, I thought that was the question, but if that's not the question, I don't still understand the question properly. Then again, Chaitanya Chandra Prabhu asked another question. I have a question. Why 16 rounds? Can I chant two rounds and is enough? No. Because Shri Prabhupada says 16 rounds, we have to chant 16 rounds. The Acharya gives the rules. We don't make the rules. We can't make our own rules. In fact, 16 rounds is the minimum. In fact, the, the real standard is all the time chanting, Skirtaniya Sada Hari. That should be the real thing. If I want to bring down the chanting means, I have no taste for chanting. I have to increase my taste, not bring the level down. I have to rise to the level. Mm. So I can't make it substandard. I have to rise to the standard. So what Acharya says that we have to follow. We can't invent our own rules because these are the bona fide. We have already gone through that. It's late 10 to 31. We have already gone through that many times. Canto 10, Canto 10 chapter 2, text 31. Chanting 16 rounds and following four principles. These are bona fide instructions, Prabhupada said there in the purport. So, we have to follow the Acharya's directions. Then, Ayapa Prabhu is asking, Hare Krishna Prabhu, I wish to have a live Japa session with you and Sundar Prabhu. Well, by the time you will be sleeping. It's, uh, we do live Japa here, what? Sundar Gopal Prabhu wakes up at 2.30, you will be 12, 12 p.m., I mean 12 a.m., midnight then for you. It's not practical, just do live wherever you are. I mean, let's just do Japa wherever you are. And... You know, it's not about that. We just have to do our own programs, you know. <clears throat> Virendra Prabhu, I use Gita base of ISKCON for texts. Is it okay? I think it is okay. The only thing is, I think what I have seen in the Gita base, uh, I may be wrong. I may be wrong because I used it very, very long, many years ago. The diacritic marks were not there at that time. Maybe now they are there. Whatever, if you, if you are an access of Prabhupada's books, you can use that. Uh, nothing against that. Alright, I think with that, 
I will wrap up the session. Thank you all for attending this session for so long, three hours. So thank you very much, Shri Prabhupada Kujai. Tomorrow we will start a new series. I think Ishopanishad will be the next topic. Um, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, we will start with Ishopanishad. And then, yeah, I have other plans. So we will try to keep this daily sessions going. Those will be not as long because these Ritvik sessions especially was very important and a lot of questions as well. So it was long. I'm sorry for taking so much time. But the more, those sessions won't be as long. We will try to finish them at 9.15 p.m. here in Singapore and take questions and then that's it. If anything, then we can always go to the next day. So we'll go like that. All right. So thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada ki jai, Ananta Kori Vaishnavrind ki jai, Shri Shri Radha Madan Mohan ki jai, Nithai Gaur Premanande, Hari Hari Bol, Hare Krishna.